Over 20 years ago, Alex Jones created the media platform called InfoWars, and in the decades since, it's grown into a truly remarkable institution with over 200 radio affiliates, tens of millions of unique website visitors monthly, and a 24-7 live news TV channel broadcasting from state-of-the-art studios in Austin, Texas. InfoWars has become the most trusted independent news source in the country dedicated to delivering breaking news, live coverage of special events, and exclusive reports you won't find anywhere else. While the old guard media struggles to maintain supremacy in a landscape rocked by innovation and technology, InfoWars has been at the forefront of the information revolution. From 8 million radio listeners, over 2 million YouTube subscribers, or the billions of views of our online content, InfoWars proves dominant in every facet of media we enter. For the hardest hitting reports, uncompromising analysis, for high profile interviews and bombshell revelations, accept no substitutes. Demand truth. Demand InfoWars. InfoWars. Tomorrow's news today. Everyone thinks so, but I would never say it. <laughs> you know what I want to do? I want to get it finished. The prize I want is victory for the world. Gentlemen, it's already the 27th day of June 2018, and the Republican Party's huevos have dropped. That was the headline out of Information Liberation. GOP's, you know, what's just dropped. Republicans release ad savaging unhinged Democratic Party. But as I briefed everyone yesterday, this is officially a multinational corporation allied with communist China, radical Islam, the authoritarian EU, Hollywood, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, and others, to implode the third world who've doubled their populations the last 20 years, flood the West, organize the groups into dependent welfare classes who then will politically move to completely convert the nations to socialist dystopias that the global banks set offshore tax exempt managing and imploding. We are being laid on the table and tied down by the big globalist spider to be sucked dry. But right at the 11th hour, nationalists all over the world, buoyed by populations that had been hearing about this global government coming for decades and exactly how it would execute, 
realized that they'd been warned and then it was all real and they took action. So if you read the Financial Times of London, if you read any of the established publications, they say, quote, now give me the Conrad Black, former steering member of the Bilderberg Group. He was on Canadian TV just yesterday. And they said, world government's dead. World government's a fraud. Nation states are rising. But the left is planning to savage the economies and start class-based wars. So we're winning, but we're not out of the woods by a long shot. Alexandra Cortez beat the 10-term Democrat establishment individual, who I could care less about. He did all his race baiting and anti-white crap as well. He apologized for being white. And she won in a landslide in the primary because of quotes like this. Moreover, this is officially put up by her, not only is this about gender and race, this is about class. Communist is what she is. She's a communist, not a democratic socialist. And so she'll take us the way of Venezuela. But this is the Democrats' answer is revolution martial law. This ad dropped last night officially by the grand old party, the GOP. You can officially now say that the libertarian, nationalist, populist, free market renaissance is now taking near full control of the Republican Party to the abject horror of the Democrats funded by their billionaire and trillion dollar companies that are tax exempt. But they are going to strike back, and now it's mainstream headlines everywhere. Revolution, civil war. Democrats in Texas call for firebombing Stephen Crowder. They call for the deaths of the Trump family. They mean business. And they've swallowed up hundreds of countries and killed hundreds of millions of people with their little left-hand path Jacobin proto-communist system and they're not giving up because just like we've mainlined how the world really works there's globalism there's offshore tax exempt banks that fund socialism in your country and communism in your country collectivism progressivism to control you to domesticate you to create unified vertically integrated markets they control as monopoly men just as we've exposed that and have our counter-strike against the globalist takeover happening in dozens of countries right now as populism and nationalism awakens, the globalists are betting on demographically brainwashing the 93% of people on the planet that aren't white, that whites are evil, whites are bad, and have class struggle mixed with race war to take over the West, conquer the West, and then redistribute wealth when it's the very same system the globalists used in their countries to bring them down to control them. More than 20 now third world countries like Venezuela, Argentina, were as wealthy as the U.S. until they went under socialism. Now they are hell holes beyond what Trump called Haiti a S-you-know-what hole because there's sewage running down the streets. That's where you get that term. A hell hole is where hundreds of thousands of people starve to death or get murdered every year. And Latin America is collapsing, Africa is collapsing, many areas of Asia are collapsing. Anywhere they've got Islamic systems or socialism or communism in. And so their answer is a revolution against the Renaissance. But the GOP, as many have said, have now gone to puberty and the, and, and the, and the testes have dropped. It's a medical situation here. And so that's why the globalists are so upset. They realize the sleeping giant was sleeping. It wasn't intimidating. So the sleeping giant just went into puberty. So the uh, New World Order is in deep, deep trouble. The video's on Infowars.com. You can get it out everywhere. I'm going to retweet it at Real Alex Jones right now. Please retweet that, guys. Uh, the GOP's Wavos just dropped. Must-see video. Shows the left's buildup towards blood in the streets, burn, baby, burn, revolution or death as they all fight to get in the U.S. And, and turn it into what they just left. And as the big billionaires sit back laughing, financing it all, it's not going to work, Bezos. It's not going to work, Bill Gates. It's not going to work, Tim Cook. You guys are monsters. It's not going to work, James Brown with a wig. So here is the new GOP.
you'd think it's InfoWars, but it's not. And our plan has always been to make ourselves obsolescent because we're the big mighty oak that grows and drops the acorns, and one day there's a big forest there. And one day lightning strikes, the old oak burns to the ground and produces nitrogen for all the little baby trees. And so goes on the cycle forever. But we're far from the big win. But we're getting into the territory where if we could completely turn this around, we're going to the next level. Life extension, everything, it's really amazing. But there is the specter of collectivism that can't even produce running water or electricity or automobiles. They, they haven't had toilet paper for five years in Venezuela. Most areas don't have electricity now. 50 years ago, Venezuela was as rich as the U.S. per capita. Not anymore. They since ate their dogs and cats years ago. Over a thousand starved to death a week, but that's illegal to say it. It's so terrible, people will take 2,000 mile treks to El Norte to get up here around the evil, vicious gringo and the evil, vicious, what's left of capitalism that Trump's desperately trying to refire. He's trying to get the engine going. He's almost got it going and they're throwing monkey wrenches at everything. No, 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 don't do that because they want to crash the economy. It's a communist program called Cloward and Piven. That's just one enunciation of it. That's just one pronunciation. That's one system. It's Bill Maher saying, I'm $100 million in the, in the black. You, I want you to be in a crash to teach you, to teach you. That's the essence of feudalism. You, you don't think they couldn't have Latin America be prosperous. They want it corrupt. They want it dumbed down. They want it that way. That's how you manage people. That's what the WikiLeaks talks about. There's new documents came out today of John McCain working with the IRS to persecute Christians and veterans groups and gun groups. And then the Republicans lied to Trump and got him to appoint the guy running it for the Democrats to the head of the operation to keep doing it. He'll be gone now. And that's why we've been tasked to continue to ferret in to who is not loyal to America and the president because the president says he cannot obviously be aware of it all, and he thanks us for bringing this to his attention in Judicial Watch and others, but we've all been tasked. I'll just tell you. Maybe I should just read off the list of what we've been tasked for. I don't think George Soros wants you to know what we've been tasked for. Would you like me to read what we've been tasked for? Here, would you like me to read from somebody you might have heard of? Would you like me to read what the uh, tasking is? Maybe I should just read this for everybody here on air because that's what it comes down to. There's a lot going on, ladies and gentlemen. You know, maybe I just won't read this, but the whole point is that it's our job to take on topics others won't that will help the cause in the longer term to save the republic, to save free market, and to bring hope to the people again in unity. Expose the frauds and hacks in the administration to undermine the boss. And some other things I'm not going to say on air. But the point is, we're really trying to save the country and the world. We're really trying to deploy the advanced technologies that have been suppressed. The globalists don't want anybody having that. And you've got these poor, starving, desperate, dumbed down third world masses that are going to set to double again in just the next 10, 15 years. And they are all being taught by globalist owned media come to the north, take it over. It's all there. Everything's free. Come, come, come. There are more Chinese women coming in than all Mexicans combined every month to have their babies for free, everything for free. It's all been designed. It's all been set up. It's all been ready. And now the Democrats, funded by the globalists, are in a worldwide war to bring down Europe, bring down Australia, bring down the UK, bring down the US. So there's nowhere to run in the end. It's just collapsed. Poor people everywhere with high-tech corporate city-states, tax-exempt, above the law, heavily armored, that is their plan. That is their official goal. But their world government is now in crisis because people understand. Here's the GOP ad. A few years ago, ideas that we talked about were thought to be fringe ideas, radical ideas, extremist ideas. Those ideas are now mainstream. I, I, I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. Do something about your dad.
That's immigration practices, you feckless c What's Uncle Tom but for white women who disappoint other white women? One way you get rid of Trump is a crashing economy, so please bring on the recession. When was the last time an actor assassinated the president? I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. What's the unifying thing you see there? All a bunch of washed up losers, the past, failures. We've got a whole bunch of satellite feeds and every major news channel feed into this command center here in Austin, Texas. And no one is carrying this live speech of the president that I see. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go to it. Uh, he's addressing union officials and people. It's about jobs. And, and so here is the president live. He just started speaking two minutes ago. So here it is wrong direction. It was heading in no direction. There was nothing happening, and now it's happening. And you heard me the other day when I was talking about it. Let the rich guys do it. We have all these rich guys. They love rockets. They're all sending up Bezos and uh, Elon Musk and all of them. They're sending ro They love the rocket business. Let them just rent it to them for a lot of money and let them play. You know, they need our land. It's good to be in the real estate business. They need our land. Let them send up their rockets. Let them be the first to Mars and we'll take all the credit, okay? <laughs> but uh, NASA is very important, and we also, on a serious note, are very, very much involved with uh, that, and also from a military standpoint, space. You know all about Space Force, but space is a very big factor in the Trump administration, uh, very important for defense. Space Force, each of you represent the future of this nation. You aren't afraid to speak the truth and the truth is you know it. And to stand up for what you know is right, even if it means being politically incorrect on occasion. Okay, I've been politically incorrect a lot, and here we are. So it's okay, I guess. We believe in free speech on college campuses, not censorship. Institutions of higher learning should be forums for open discussion, Either way, you could be liberal, you could be conservative, you could be Democrats, Republicans. Hear it all out, and you make your choice. You may not agree with me on things. Some people don't, some people do. But you have to have free speech. You bring fresh eyes to old problems, because as young people, you're not burdened by the failed thinking of the past. And you really have to say some of the failed thinking. Some of it's been very good. You understand that for a nation to be successful, it must have a strong military, and it must have strong borders and security inside our country. And we've just had $700 billion approved, the largest ever for our military. And next year, we already have it approved, $716 billion. And we will shortly be stronger than we ever were before. So important. Hopefully, we never have to use it. We don't want to use our military for that. We want to keep training, 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 but never have to use it. But if we have to use it, nobody's going to come close. Uh, you have to believe in protecting the entire Constitution, as written, including the right to free speech and the right to keep and bear arms, Second Amendment. You know that a nation must be proud of its history to be confident. And a nation has to be confident in its future. And you know that we must honor and respect our great American flag, which we do. Everybody in this room does. We're citizens of the freest, strongest, and greatest nation on Earth. Also, I can say, greatest nation ever to exist. And we're getting stronger every day. He's delivering remarks. Uh, I have face to say, to face you're with our in the prime event, of your life. Of top students. Actually, most of you aren't even in the prime of your life. You'll be in the prime of your life in about 15 years. I'm going to make it as long as possible. But you're doing a fantastic job, and your life has been a truly exciting one. You hear that? We're going to make it live as long as possible. Room. Our economy yeah, is yeah. booming, confidence is soaring, and there has never been a better time to be young and to be American. Never been a better time. The opportunity now is incredible. Unemployment for people under the age of 24 is the lowest in almost 50 years. Think of that. The lowest, the best in almost 50 years, and shortly we're going to have the all-time best that we've ever had. No one's carrying this. African-American youth unemployment 
is the lowest level in the history of our country. And African-American unemployment is the lowest level in history. Hispanic unemployment is the lowest level in history. Women unemployment is the lowest level in 21 years and will soon be, I think, in history. I think we need another couple of months, frankly. But I think and soon we'll be able to say for women will be unemployment the lowest in history. The tax cuts haven't hit yet. Thanks to our massive tax cuts, young men and women entering the workforce are keeping more and more of the money they earn. So are older people, frankly. And it's really helping you get a stronger start in life. A lot of advantages. We've eliminated horrible policies that burden young Americans. You were burdened by things that were really, in some cases, insurmountable, including the individual mandate in Obamacare, a disaster. That's where you pay a lot of money uh, for the privilege This is powerful. Of Let, let's tape this if we can so I can come back to more of it. He's live right now. I noticed nobody was, was carrying it, uh, and so I wanted to hear what the president had to say. I got hit with something right before the show, mentally, and it all crystallized. And so I'm always breaking down stuff years before it happens. Or I'm always breaking down what's currently happening that isn't recognized for years. And I'm not bragging about that. It's just a fact. And so when I come back, and I'm hit all the news, got a bunch of big guests as well, I'm going to lay out something so huge and so incredible but once I do it, you're going to be sitting back going, I've already heard this. I already know this. Well, well it, it, it's clear, yes, but did you really think about it? Because I know I didn't, and it really hit me that this July 4th, this July 4th is going to be the second most, if not the most important July 4th. And symbolically, it's not just a date to remember. It's a new launch date. If we choose this mission, if you choose to realize the destiny, like you've already done, you're incredible. We're unstoppable. Do you understand, as the listeners and viewers and activists of this broadcast, you are credited by the enemy and by the president, both the enemy and the president, and, and, and the patriots in our government and all over the world, InfoWars audience is credited as the detonator of everything you're seeing now. You can point at a lot of groups and a lot of things, but... We were the shock troops, and we are recognized as the shock troops and, 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 and have been asked to broach the things that you get attacked for to make it safe for everybody else, including the president, to do it. We are the suicide squad, folks. And it doesn't mean you always die when you're in a suicide squad. It just means 50% you know, chance you're going to get killed carrying out a uh, tour of missions. And we are shock troops. Let me tell you something. In the Trump campaign, at the White House, where the patriots are, they know InfoWars is the tip of the spear. We are the recognized main in information warfare assault force. And Google, that's why we have internal videos. They say we're the main enemy. They know. That's why when you amplify our videos and our articles and drive them out, you're going to be attacked because you are the, the shock troops. You are the political suicide squad. Believe me, I get to go out there and face the hordes of vicious left trying to intimidate me, and I laugh at them in their face. We'll be back. InfoWars, the frontline assault troops, the shock troops, leading the charge of global victory for nationalism, for populism, for Christianity, for free market capitalism, for life extension, for true human progress, for renaissance to the stars and to infinity. That's who we are. And we've analyzed the enemy. And we were willing to go on air when you would be demonized, you would be boycotted, you would be fired. 23 years ago when I first got on air, if you talked about the Federal Reserve being private, if you had Ron Paul on your show, I was the first person to ever interview Rand Paul when his dad was running for Congress again and he had his son doing interviews. I remember Rand Paul going, well, this is my first interview. I'm doing about 20. And I'm not bragging. The point is, is that I've seen where we've come from. 
Just like Bernie Sanders says, look how far we've come, almost having communism in America, that I could win the Democratic Party, uh, you know. And this admitted communist that just won the primary in New York, she's a communist who preaches race war, class war, right out of communism. Now, there's her quote. Moreover, this is put out by her. Moreover, not only is this about gender and race, it's about class. Alexandra Cortez. Hey, lady, if it's so good, go to uh, any of the third world countries that have got socialism and see how fast you run out of there with your tail between your legs. But this is what's happened in the blue state areas that everyone's fleeing. And as the collectivism collapses, what do they do? They want more of it. And then they try to invade your area and make you submit to them. And who runs them? Who runs the communists and the socialists and all of it? The big banks, period. I was reading today. I, I can't even get Soros out of my life. He's, he's in half the news I read. Soros backs personal injury lawsuits in market with 20% returns. He funds tens of thousands of these. I told you, funding lawsuits against me. And, and then he gets a return on it on top of it. Just anything evil, anything bad that brings down countries that's parasitic, he funds it. He's pure evil that said on TV, I made happy time, as a quote, happy making time, exhilarating rounding up Jews. These are quotes. What do I get for playing the clip? I get CNN, the young turds, and then even Joe Rogan saying I'm wrong. Wow. <laughs> but that's the power of money and evil. Because all you got to do, I've even been told even lately, I could still bend over and kiss his ass and they'd stop coming after me. Never. What? Evacuate in our moment of victory? <laughs> And I ain't on the Death Star, brother. I'm in the X-Wings, and we already fired the torpedoes down your throat. So enjoy. So let me get to the ultra-massive announcement here. And then I've got to get to all this other news. <sighs> Dates mean something. We're 100 years since the Bolshevik Revolution was in full launch. We are over 100 years since the Federal Reserve took over the U.S. We're in the middle of a global awakening to this. The globalists have launched their attempt to collapse nation states and have the U.N. then manage it, which is now happening with the euro, as they announced they're going to use euro troops backed by the U.N. to block Italy, Hungary, Romania, Austria and others from stopping the Islamic invasion they've triggered. The, the UN is running a 317% increase in illegal aliens now trying to come over the border, which they've organized in Central and South America on record. And Soros is financing giant caravans of people with children coming up saying, if you get here, everything's free. And I was watching ABC News. The woman's like, my husband, they killed him and our friends on the way. Most of us were killed. Uh, and it's true. Because some of the gangs won't kill women and children. They'll just rape the women. And there's no discussion of a place like that. How did it get like that? It's all how we're bad. Unbelievable. Well, that's coming up. And so what hit me, there's not time to do it in this segment. I promise I'm doing it next. Because here's my problem. When something's this big and it's so crystal clear in your head and, and then there's so much data that goes into it, I have a problem I always keep giving you data to back it up instead of just getting to the big thought and then fleshing it out. But we are one trillion percent at a mega crossroads right now. And the people running the third world collapse and the attack on the West are the most evil, greedy, satanic, tax-exempt, above-the-law, jerks they're just completely out of control and this is a real dichotomy between good and evil or, or, or just rich people that want prosperity and aren't out to destroy capitalism and, and, and who don't want to have a global civil war against the nation state that goes into a new dark age where they then only have globalist command bases 
city-states. I mean, if you read the Club of Rome, if you read the Bilderberg Group information, if you read all their statements, I've made films about it, it's all out there. Prince Philip, Ted Turner, uh, Prince Charles, they all say it, they all do it. They want a post-industrial world, 80% depopulation bare minimum, and, and returned it to corporate nation states that are like Singapore, where they can execute you for no reason, and if you throw bubble gum on the ground, it's a year in prison. You go, well, maybe that's a good thing, but it's the other extreme. See, they destroy law and order everywhere else and then create these armored fortresses for themselves. And I'm not saying Switzerland's bad, but Switzerland, uh, Singapore, the Vatican City, it's exempt from everything else it does outside. Uh, Israel's on that model. I'm not attacking Israel, but it's, 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 it's on that model. And so that's where this is going. And they're going to create some other ones, and this is the big enchilada. That's where this is going. And if we don't realize the historic moment we're in and the choice we have, I'm going to break down the choice, but also a date and some ideas straight ahead on the other side. And I'm going to go right to it. Uh, speaking of support, uh, it takes a lot of money to run this operation in the face of the globalists and their attacks and all the rest of it. You are our underwriters. Plus, we make it easy to support us. We have the very best products out there. And we're running the biggest specials in a long time on all of the fluoride-free toothpaste line, mouthwash, uh, silver gargle, all of it. Silver cleanse, it's all there. It's got the silver salt patented technology, super blue family, all of them, whether it's individually, the adults, the children's, the mouthwash, the immune gargle, it's all 50% off. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that is getting very close to cost when we do that. But I want those of you on the fence to try it and see how great it is. We also have 25% off on the Alexa Pure Breeze, four-stage ion and HEPA filter. It's got four stages. And again, when I first was getting these in my house six, seven years ago from another company, they were $800 to $1,000 a piece and weren't even as good. Now, because of miniaturization and costs going down, you know, when, when they first started selling these a few years ago, they were like, 300 bucks. Now they've dropped it to 200 regularly because the price for them making it's gone down to like 80 bucks. To now 150 bucks. Leading competitors are 400, 500 still. So if you want four or five of these in your house, they're awesome. They're amazing. Got the pre filter and the three other filters. It's incredible. So it's there. Yeah, the regular price is 250. A lot of times it's 200. So if you really want to get technical, it's it's hundred dollars off right now, but but we usually have it discounted at two hundred. So right now at one hundred and forty nine, you cannot beat this. And I've got them in every every office of this place has got one. Uh, my house has got one in every room, and 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 one will do three or four rooms. But I like to have them in every room. And when you buy them, it funds our operation. Infoworkstore.com or triple eight two five three three one three nine. Please commit to fund. Uh, the shock troops in the fight against the globalists. The fight's never been hotter, and we've never needed your support more than right now. All right, we have unbelievable, insane breaking news. But I've got to cover the big picture. I've got to put out the main narrative of the global war that's happening because so far until this point, no one else is doing it. And, 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 and now it's being picked up, and it's critical that this information get out so people understand what they're facing and what we're dealing with. And then I'm going to hit a bunch of news that's exclusive to Infowars.com that's breaking right now. And then other news dealing with things like, uh, I'm going to get to it in a moment. But here's the bottom line. There is a global war between ultra-rich, tax-exempt, diplomatically immune individuals, you've heard me say that 5,000 times, who are financing systems to sabotage free market, sabotage nation states, sabotage the family, sabotage economies. And now you notice they're very open about that. Yo, we want to get rid of the family. It's bad. It gets in the way of the total control of the state. Mother and father's bad. Uh, we're, we, we, we want to sabotage the economy. We want to get rid of nations. White people are bad. This is being promoted by the Democratic Party. It's being promoted in Europe by the socialist. It's so we all fight with each other while these Bezoses and Tim Cooks 
and Carlos Slims and Bill Gates and Ted Turner and Oprah Winfrey. She's the only black person allowed in the in the group, by the way. Vernon Jordan's never even gotten to that level. And they all sit there and even documents get released about how they're planning a total system to cut the economy off and have a global civil war. And then out of that civil war comes a world government. And, and then yesterday, Reuters has the headline that the UN and the EU are going to merge their militaries, take over the nation states, ban country stopping invaders, and go under UN control. I, I mean, this is how you collapse a country is with hundreds of millions of people trying to pour in. And the 10 million they just poured in the last few years, they admit is a beta test. And Macron said a month ago, and Merkel said a month ago, Macron said 200 million, she said 300 million. And we're talking about folks that come from dirt villages that, 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 that don't even hardly know how to talk. And then the Democrats and the liberals and the socialists organize them to start bombing and shooting and raping and stabbing. And then major countries, I, I, Finland, you name it, legalize if you're a Muslim raping nine-year-old girls. That's the headline. Supreme Court says they can do it. So, so let me give you the big announcement. There is a global corporate move to collapse any wealth they don't control because when you drive down wealth, you can then consolidate it and get it. So if they can have a worldwide depression, smokescreened by global race war, that, the, that their media hypes, to these third world populations, that the globalists, Bill Gates, the UN, all of them spend billions a year beaming anti-America, anti-Europe stuff in, putting local radio stations in, putting satellite receivers into villages, paying the, the elders to make everyone listen in Asia, Africa, Latin America, to sit there and go take over America, take over Europe, everything's free. They're bad races, they deserve it anyways. Come north, come north, it's all free. Women, money, it's all there. And I've played the clips of, of the of, in African languages, Latin American languages. They have the, the main imams of Jerusalem saying, they are weak, the white dogs will die, their women will be ours, we will slit their throats. <laughs> and, and then that's beamed into Europe. And, and Ergon's blown the border. I mean, this is the 21st century war. This is it. And when they're done letting enough of the third world in to bring down some of the West, they're going to bioweapon, race-specific, and they've got it dialed in, ladies and gentlemen, where it is going to wipe out, I think the first wave will wipe out about 2 billion people. And, and everybody's been like, whoa, that immigrant invasion isn't a problem anymore. Uh, yeah, because they all just got killed. So th these billionaires are the real Nazis. They're all super eugenicist Nazis. Bill Gates is on record. His dad, Cold Springs Harbor, Planned Parenthood, all of them. They're all signed on, okay? And that's why they pose as liberals doing things to the West they know are going to be so horrible that the West is going to get in line for the first wave of wiping everybody out. And Donald Trump got briefed on this five years ago, and he said, this is crazy. We're not doing that. And he got recruited to try to counter all this, but, but I'm digressing, and that's all come out now. I'm just telling everybody, man, as dumb as these people are, they ship in and fill them full of hate and everything, realize they're just like zombies. The enemy is these big billionaires and trillionaire controllers who control trillions, and they're playing. And so here's the big announcement. This July 4th, 2018, historically as a demarcation line, you can mark as the point of when the global civil war against free humanity and pro-human, pro-Renaissance, classical liberal human future versus the technocracy, the post-humanist, the post-industrialist, the breakaway civilization, eugenicist. And if you're going to join with the real Nazis that actually set Hitler up as a beta test, that's on record, posing as liberals, you either, you're either with the technocracy and the human exterminist or you're with the resistance. And it's much harder making things work and coming together and fixing things and believing in humanity. And, but, but, but we can do it, and we've done it, and Trump knows it. It's about optimism. It's about a future. And we've got everything we need. But he won't let the globalists be in total control anymore. And there'll be real competition. 
And so this is the choice you're getting. And so this July 4th is a July 4th worldwide. We've got to create some hashtags. We've got to get everybody promoted. The point is this is a time of reflection, not getting drunk, not eating a bunch of, you know, steaks or whatever. That's a side issue. As good as that sounds. We need to understand there is a global takedown of nation states, a global takedown of populations. There is an attempt to get us all each other's throats by these mega banks that are exempt from everything they're doing. And that we have to announce that this is the beginning of a worldwide movement against empires, against royalty, against above the law bankers, against them all. And that it's a planetary awakening 1776 worldwide, that doesn't mean U.S. control. That doesn't mean, uh, no, any, no, no, it's the opposite. It's ideas. It's soft power. It's the next level of the Renaissance. It's really working with countries, really building up industry, getting the globalists out of these nations that are destabilizing them on purpose so they can consolidate and control all the power over the dysfunctional system. And so that's it. This July 4th. How many years has it been since 1776? Almost 250? What is it, 245 years? 242. I'm just going off the top of my head. 242, is that right? So we're, we're 242 years since the founding of this idea saying no to a king who ruled us from afar. Didn't mean we were perfect. But the point was, we were going for something bigger. And then it became this country everybody wanted to come to because there was more freedom here than other places. And so the globalists can't compete with that. They can't compete with even 10% freedom or 20% freedom. They can't compete with America, so they have to undermine it. They have to bring it down. But they're not bringing down America to transfer the wealth of the third world. That was all a lie. They were doing that to parlay our money and power into the third world to control everybody. And it's totally and completely sick. And so you can mark this July 4th 2018, 242 years later, as the moment where everybody should really, truly pick a side and decide whether you're going to be a conformist in your own destruction, a conformist with the deindustrialization, post-industrial world of the eugenicist, or whether you're going to be strong and stand up to their bullying, stand up to the media, speak out yourself, be involved, and be on team humanity. Because this new July 4th is about team humanity. It's not about team America. It's about every country in the world with its own people and its own population believing in a human ideal and standing up for their culture and their rights and then freely working with other cultures and adopting parts of other cultures that they choose to adopt but not being force fed that so it creates a discordic, discordia uh, tower of Babel where the globalists can come in and control everybody in their own admissions. It's prosperity and human justice and human destiny versus centralization and total control. And so I've got to wrap my mind around it, but I think this July 4th is, is the launch of the second American revolution, the real launch of the Renaissance, a global revolution of understanding, of a true enlightenment. We're now hitting the second stage of boost into space. This is the big phase that if we make it to this, we go in, we go above, and we transcend the psychopaths and control freaks that study humanity, not to empower humanity, but to enslave it. We are passing the epic crossroads. We must make the right decision culturally and spiritually and economically July 4th. We are back live broadcasting worldwide. I am your host, Alex Jones, and we just laid out the fact that we're in a global revolution with big ruthless mega banks trying to destroy free market and competition, taking over, and then trying to base everything on race. Uh, as a way to control people because that's a very base way to do it. It is a total assault on Western civilization, a total assault on common sense, you name it. Mike Adams is going to be in studio. He's on fire fighting all of this and getting into the fact that they're openly launching a civil war. Of course, you've heard about that here first, but now it's all over the place. Uh, Gary Byrne is coming on. He, of course, is uh, filed lawsuit uh, against the Clintons and Podesta and more. So that's good that he's taking action. Former Secret Service agent, he is coming on. I want to get to the dichotomy between, yes, we are riding a big global wave of freedom, but it's in response to just decades of pure social engineering and evil. 
and the globalists have a plan to beat it. And it's all about bringing in third world populations that are totally dependent on them to then be given voter IDs, which the Democrats admit they're doing with illegals. And they play this game like, oh, no, we're not doing that. It's the same thing in Europe to have checkmate. It's even easier in Europe because it's a parliamentary system. So you get 10% and the Muslims vote as a block, then you've got them. So we have to quantify the battle space because notice they would always say there's no world government, there's no plan to open the borders, there's no plan to have illegals vote, there's no plan to target families, there's no plan for socialism, there's no plan for communism, there's no plan for single payer, there's no plan for any of this to get you totally dependent. And then once they get in control, they do it. But we have to quantify down to its parts What's happening? Who the players are? And then what makes the players tick? See, I've seen this about 5,000 times, what I'm about to get into. And, and, and you know, it, it, it makes me so upset. And then I know that they got big money backing them to sue me if I make any misstep of what I say or what I do. And it's not like I'm even afraid of these people. I just want to, like judo, walk softly and carry a big stick, but I, I see the iconography. You see gangs, particularly criminal groups, wear symbols so you can identify who they are. So that members of the club know who they are, but that you don't. And I have seen, and I, and I meant to do a report on this, and I get so busy that I haven't done it, but I'm going to do it. But I'm trying to figure out how to do it, where I can show 20 or 30 people who've been arrested and busted and convicted of kidnapping and raping little children, and then how they were school resource officers, they were the local LBGBT reach out group to the children and the pins they wear and the things they do and then how they're in the newspapers and they advertise it because everything with them is about throwing it in our face what they're doing. And so now they've come out because they think they discredited Pizzagate with that sophisticated thing they pulled. And they've got articles everywhere with these guys telling you even what they're doing in your face. The good news is law enforcement's hitting them and hitting them hard. Head of prominent charity that campaigns against child abuse is arrested for trying to arrange the rape of multiple children as young as two. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, oh, that's, that's coming up. That's mainstream news. That's right. Yeah, Michael Jackson's 89-year-old daddy died. I say, who cares? That was reportedly a pretty bad dude. We've got stories up on Infowars.com. Cop hospitalized from opioid-laced flyer placed on sheriff's vehicles. Law enforcement appears to be the target, but it's the bizarre message in it that makes me question exactly what's going on. So that's coming up in a moment. We've got a lot more to get to today. You've got Trump having huge victories with every candidate that was even behind that he plugs and endorses winning. But you've got a phenomenon of hardcore communists beating establishment party Democrats and winning primaries, like in the case of New York. So that's all coming up. Now, that said... Law enforcement and patriots in FBI manuals decades ago published internal books on recognizing pedophile gang signs. And so when Podesta got caught in the emails with the Aleister Crowley stuff and kids in hot tubs being delivered to the farmhouse for their pleasure and you know, uh, how good's this cheese pizza? How good's the sauce?
how good are the nuts, how brown are the nuts. I mean, it's all what color are the kids, all that. It, it's the known codes. And they had a big problem when the spirit cooking came out and everything during the end of the campaign in, in early November. They had a big problem when it came out in WikiLeaks and then Wiener and Epstein, the little Lita Express and all of it. They had a big problem. And, and, and those documents are public. Federal Bureau of Investigation, Intelligence Bulletin, the symbols used by the pedophiles, which we know is a giant underground currency. Drugs are an underground currency, jewels, art, but sex trafficking of women and children is the big one. So, what were they going to do? Well, they then got the New York Times, the Washington Post, and CNN to all focus on a pizza place that didn't have a basement and there wasn't evidence of what ended up getting said. But I remember seeing it, I'm like, this is weird. It's all mainstream news pointing at this. I said, I think this is a distraction. And everybody got mad at me for that or whatever. And we still cover what people were saying about it. And people said, oh, he backed off Pizzagate. No, no, no. Pizzagate in the government documents and in the WikiLeaks and in New York and other areas and Epstein and all of this stuff, that's all come out. That's real that they use pizza and Italian food terms as code words. That's in federal documents. You're a TV viewer. I just showed them to you. But I've since talked to victims and I've talked to law enforcement and I've talked to people that have been involved on the periphery with the individuals and that know about it. And I'm going to leave it at that. It's been turned over to law enforcement. That explained it to me. And they said, you're going to see some bus coming up soon. And I was shown some of the things. And I didn't go on air with them. But we're talking major newspapers saying, don't pull anything up. I'm not ready to do this. Oh, look at this school uh, health teacher, uh, you know, that teaches the, 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 the uh, seventh graders that, you know, it's okay to see porn and all this. And then all over the walls is I love pizza, 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 and, and, and all this stuff about Italian food. And it's there in the magazine. It's there in the newspapers in a bunch of cities. And you're looking at law enforcement bulletins, and then there's bulletins about Texas and New York and all these places where they have the same article put out in the last few months with here's the man that's going to teach your kids about porn and sex. And then there's all this iconography about loving pizza and pizzas and Italian food and sauces all over the walls. And I'm being told by law enforcement that's what's going on. And you've got Salon. You've got the New York Times. You've got HBO, Vice, coming out and saying, this man's not a monster. And look how creepy they are. Pull up the pedophiles they show. They go, this is a man's a pedophile. He lusts after your four-year-old daughter. They show video of him lusting over little girls. And they go, he's not bad. You're bad. See, it's the final thing is to put it in your face, to shove it. Can you guys put back on screen, though, the InfoWars version of it? Yeah, Salon deletes articles defending pedophilia from site. But, but, but put up the InfoWars version uh, of the Daily Mail article I'm about to cover, if you can, the, 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 that we had on this TV here in a minute, because I want to show it. Because the individual is wearing a Disney symbol of, of, the rap, of, of the mouse ears of Mickey Mouse with a rainbow on it. And I was told by law enforcement that that symbol is what they use to show what they are and what they're doing along with a few others. So, so let's go to the InfoWars.com version of this one. There it is. Now, I was told this and almost went public three weeks ago with this. But I said, I'm going to wait. And law enforcement said, just watch. Boom. Now this happens. And again, this is one of the many people and symbols I was directed to look at in a network that is reportedly mainlining this into the culture. They are the vanguard of the whole NAMBLA movement that the UN accepts to normalize a 50-year-old man coming and taking your six-year-old daughter or son out for a date. And if the child wants to do it, they, they do it.
but they're brainwashed at school, it's a great thing to do. They promise them credit cards, candy, whatever. Head of prominent charity, this is the Daily Mail breaking, that campaigns against child abuse is arrested for trying to arrange to rape multiple children as young as two. And there he is. What is the symbol? It's a rainbow children's symbol. Well, because it's okay. See, if it's gay, they're liberating the young two-year-olds. You see, it's, well, what's that saying? What is a rainbow about? It's saying any type of sex is fine. Well, then why is it a child symbol? But see, we're so accepting if you say, well, we're going to teach kids about sex so they're open. Well, then let them teach them anything. Let them teach them they're another gender, any of it. And this is going on in health departments, in school health classes all over the country. And they do news articles showing the men that teach your boys and girls that porn's good, that all this stuff. And, and if you think it's good or bad, they're sexualizing your children. Joel Davis, 22, was arrested in New York on Tuesday on child abuse charges. The head of the charity that campaigns against sexual violence has been arrested in New York for child pornography and allegedly trying to meet with children as young as two for sex. Just like at Penn State, it was a children's charity with already raped kids, so no one would believe them. And then all these rich people would come and stay at the school in these facilities to, quote, mentor the children. Ugh. And the Democrat arm of the FBI was involved in the charity. Ugh. Ugh. You don't even get at the top of the FBI now if you don't rape little kids. And, and by the way, who's the number to get in the club? Notice. Two years old. Oh, the child consented, I'm sure. To bleeding everywhere. So all I'm telling you is, you know why I'm losing sleep, man? Because I know I've been, I've been given everything, okay, that Trump knows, okay, about this. And th th let me tell you something. I'm ashamed of this country. I love America, but I'm, I'm ashamed. We've probably got 30 million pedophiles in the country, and now they've got women for the first time roped into it. Women would never do stuff like this in history. Maybe one out of, a, you know, 1,000 uh, pedophiles would be a woman. Now they've gotten women through seeking out power, they believe, that are like uh, the new burgeoning thing is that we have women torturing kids and raping them, killing them. Hell, it just came out last week, murdering little girls, torturing them for Satan. And, 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 and it, it's the people running the children's charities. That's who they are. Well, a year and a half after it should have been done, Trump is finally set a date for meeting with Putin. That has now been announced. Raquel Thelen has the article on Infowars.com. The date has not been announced, but the date has been set. Breaking Russia's says time and date set for Trump-Putin meeting. I think we have this first because I was just watching Fox News 20 minutes ago. They were still uh, talking about Bolton over in Russia, and the date hadn't been set. But the Russians say it has been set. And we've got the article up on Infowars.com and Newswars.com right now. More on that. Okay, so... Uh, of course, this individual uh, who runs a children's charity to stop the raping of children and who st tries to stop the abuse of children who want to become transgender. So he wants to talk to your five-year-old and, and tell him about sex. It's, it's a, oh, I'm a transgender expert. Let me talk to your kid about sex. Anybody else walks over at the park and does that, you break their jaw, you call the police. A pervert came over here, officers. But oh, there he is in a photo on his own Facebook a Hillary campaign member. Uh, how surprising is that? In fact, I said during the break, because I didn't see they had it up on screen or not, I said, look into his Facebook 1,000%. He is a Hillary minion, because Hillary leads the pedophile army. And I'm not just saying that, L literally. And yeah, they say I'm fearless. I'm not fearless. And scroll over. That's that's not him. It's it's he, he's over on the other side. Yeah, there it is. There he is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these are these are these are these are some interesting um, you know, people that campaign for Hillary. They've all got their different reasons. They're not all into this type of stuff. But at its heart, there is the obsession with children. The obsession with taking control of the youth, kind of like Melissa Harris Perry said on MSNBC, your children belong to the state. The family is bad because they got a new family. 
head of prominent charity that campaigns against child abuse, this is the Daily Mail, arrested for trying to arrange the rape of multiple children as young as two. And see, that's the perfect cover we found, just like they've caught Hillary and Haiti and her own aides get convicted, trying to ship kids out and a bunch of them disappear. And now the Democrats had it under Obama where for three years, kids wouldn't even be checked. They were just put on anybody's truck or bus they wanted and disappeared. And even the Washington Post admits tens of thousands are missing, hundreds have been found dead, many of them in sex trafficking. But see, Trump wants to hurt the children. Joel Davis, 22, was arrested in New York on Tuesday on child sex abuse charges. The head of the charity that campaigns against sexual violence has been arrested in New York for child pornography and allegedly trying to meet with children as young as two for sex. Good God. I'll volunteer if he's convicted to pull the lever. Joel Davis, 22, is accused of trying to set up sexual encounters between himself and young children, as well as soliciting an undercover FBI agent to send sexually explicit videos of minors. And it goes on that he did it all for months and months. The New Yorker was arrested on Tuesday on child sex abuse and child pornography charges. Child sex abuse, God almighty. Davis is the chairman of the International Campaign to Stop Rape and Gender Violation and Conflict. Yeah, you got to get into those war zones. Got those, got those UN planes. Famously, I mean, just thousands of articles of trafficking kids everywhere. God, he's right in the middle of it. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Fits the perfect profile. He's a chairman of the international campaign to stop the rape and gender violence in conflict, an organization devoted to ending sexual violence. Well, I'm sure the two-year-olds, according to NAMBLA, gave their consent, right? But notice, I was told by law enforcement, this symbol and others about children and the rainbow, because the rainbow is about sex with who you want, now in their system, and it's, oh, it's cute, and he's letting you know. He's letting you know there's the symbol right there. Oh, but don't criticize it. You're against gay people. Because see, if a man wants to rip, you know, the insides out of your two-year-old son, it's love when the North American man-boy love association says it's just love, right? And, and, and so this is the coming out now, you see, in Salon, in HBO, in Vice, in the New York Times about pedophilia is not a bad thing. It's love. It's loving with your children. And, and, you know, just how beautiful your four- or five-year-old girl is. And, and, and they put this out there like it's a great thing. Prosecutors say despite his involvement in the organization, Davis exchanged text messages with undercover agents over the course of several weeks earlier this month. And they're so satanically possessed, they can't help it. I know people that have been exchanging text messages with prominent Democrats. That, that send back and have whole screenshots. I mean, I'll just tell people what, what we've been, I mean, going on here. And, and, and the Democrats are like, sex with kids is loving, it's no big deal. I mean, it's a, they can't, it's a cult, people. And they all got that smile, don't they? The smile we talk about. Uh, he's gonna do what he, he's gonna, he's a vampire. He's gonna steal that essence. The next best thing to cutting a kid and having him cry for mommy over an hour while a bunch of vampires slice its flesh and drink its blood. That's what they do. They torture the baby as it bags. Two, two years old, begging for mama. That's their favorite. Too little, they don't get the full, full horror of the child. The child blacks out. But two, three, it's the favorite. And don't worry, they've got your children because they're liberal. And the ones they can't abort and they can't get to commit suicide. Is that the subway guy right there? Oh, no, that's Brian Stelter. No, no, I'm at the subway guy. Get the subway guy up there. I'm not saying Brian Stelter is a bad guy. The subway guy, though, he, yeah, he, he's got the look. He's got the look. Hey, yeah, uh, he's got the look. The soul, oh, no, it's not, yeah, come on. Stelter's a good guy. He just rapes the truth. Brian Stelter. Never, 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 never hurt anybody in his little life. The 22-year-old allegedly arranged to meet with nine-year-old daughter of one of the undercover agents and with a purported two-year-old daughter of the officer's girlfriend. He allegedly went into detail the text messages about the sexual activities he intended to engage in with the children. Prosecutors say Davis repeatedly asked the undercover agents to take naked and sexually explicit pictures and videos of the children and to send them to him. And, of course, it turns out he's a big diplomat with Oxford and the U.N. Of course he is. 
Following his arrest, Davis allegedly admitted to officers that he had abused a 13-year-old boy in the past and that he kept child porn images on his phone. And it goes into what he wanted to do to the kids. Having started an organization that pushed for the end of sexual violence, Davis displayed the highest degree of hypocrisy by his alleged attempts to sexually exploit multiple minors, FBI Assistant Director Charles William Sweeney Jr. said. As if it wasn't repulsive enough, Davis allegedly possessed and distributed utterly explicit images of innocent infants and toddlers being sexually abused by adults. Davis faced Manhattan Federal Court. It goes on from there. Davis started an organization devoted to stopping sexual violence while allegedly engaging in the implicit behavior of sharing explicit images of infants engaging in sexual activity. Davis also allegedly solicited an undercover officer with whom he thought was willing to participate to send sexually explicit videos of their nine-year-old daughter and two-year-old baby. The conduct goes on from there. And they run your schools and they run your local sex ed. And they're going to put little rainbow Disney pins on. <laughs> now, we've got the news being announced that Trump is going to meet with Putin. Russia says the date's been set. The story's on Infowars.com. We've got just a bunch of other incredibly important news breaking here on the economy, on the left calling for riots and, 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 and violence all over the country. Uh, and, and now they admit their plan for civil war that we got in the Soros documents in January. And I kept telling people they're, they're, they're planning this. They even got blue city police departments in the documents uh, where, where they're going to let Antifa try to trigger confrontations that lead to a wider conflagration. And clearly Charlottesville was a beta test of that. Real people were fighting each other, but it was triggered by paid agitators. And so we're in a very, very serious time here trying to stabilize the country. The same stuff's going on in Europe, but we're joined for the next 30 minutes by a very well-known, respected uh, former Secret Service agent, Gary Byrne. He uh, has written several best-selling books. The latest is Secrets of the Secret Service, The History of an Uncertain Future of the U.S. Secret Service. And he has now filed, there's an article from the Western Journalism Center. There's stories up on Infowars.com. There's articles up on Zero Hedge about it. Ex-Clinton Secret Service agent files conspiracy charges against Hillary, Bill, and Podesta. And I love how the mainstream media spun it and said, there's no such things as conspiracy. What are there, tens of thousands of conspiracy charges filed federally every year? Uh, I mean, conspiracy is just two or more people deciding that they're going to get together and collude. Look at the paper play. Look at the WikiLeaks. Look at uh, the conspiracy at the Justice Department to frame Trump when he was a candidate. It's all a thousand, I, mean, I keep saying a thousand percent, it's above a hundred percent, it's totally from every angle confirmed a conspiracy. And so thank God he's doing this because I see it as the cavalry. I, I've said on air, people that have uh, a claim, people that have standing, man, Soros and the globalists are suing anybody that isn't anti-American. Anybody that just wants to have prosperity and racial unity and front libertarian, they are just, Soros has financed 20 lawsuits against me. We've gotten 10 thrown out. But, I mean, it is just hellish what he's doing. And so thank God people like our next guest, Gary Byrne, uh, are taking action. He's Gary Byrne, B-Y-R-N-E, author uh, on Twitter, at Gary Byrne Author, official, GaryByrne.com. Uh, and he uh, joins us. He's a, a veteran Secret Service officer at the Clinton White House, served in federal law enforcement for nearly 30 years in the U.S., Air Force, Security Police, Uniform Division of Secret Service, and most recently as a federal air marshal. I should just go on and on. While serving Secret Service Officer Gary protected Bill Clinton from the first family in the White House. You know, Bongino's come on many times, and he was a senior guy. that He said, it's worse than you know. I'm like, worse than Alex Jones? He goes, yeah, it's worse. And, and, and then, you know, his house gets broken into in a bunch. He gets threatened, so he doesn't come back on anymore. The point is, is that you cannot underestimate how bad these people are, and uh, I think Gary and like one other FBI agent are the only, of course, they get audited and harassed and everything else has now come out in the news today, that you had McCain's people involved with the Democrats harassing everybody. So I'm, I'm in the club of being harassed and attacked. And I'm not saying, oh, I'm a hero. I'm just saying people don't know what they do when you go up against them. But I got to tell you, I get real satisfaction of what I've paid going after the Clintons for 20 plus years, being fired off radio, being boycotted, being audited, then, then having them try to destroy my family, having them put PIs on me, all this, to now see them falling is just feeling like I'm getting a bully off my chest. It's not even satisfaction. It's like you, you, you ever like kind of run out of air and you're 100 feet under diving, kind of get to the top breathless because you had to go up too quick because you didn't have time to decompress. You ever done that? 
and but still you get the air and it feels like you've been reborn i i feel like i'm being strangled and i'm starting to get air how do you feel gary i feel uh exactly like that to be honest with you I, i'm grateful first of all Alex, it's great to be on your show again and thank you for the time that you provided for me before and now um i feel very grateful that this lawsuit is coming forward um you know it took a while to put it together um and, and basically you described it exactly how it is it's um it's not you know my attorney who was uh, the same attorney uh, one of the attorneys who helped me during the original bill clinton impeachment scandal um he came to me and said you know well, i'm watching what's going on they're defaming you and slandering on you and i don't care that they're hurting your feelings what I care about is, is they're using these criminal methods that they always use. You know, he said it's it's racketeering, Gary. They 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 are they are bullying these news agencies, and we know now, Alex, that that um, the retired Secret Service Agents Association got its talking points from the Secret Service, which means that a government agency basically conspired with a former president, a campaign, a foundation. George Soros, this this whole group, they conspired to invent, to give them information that they could then spin uh, in, in negative ways about me. Which and, is which uh, is what Nixon got removed from office for not even getting caught doing, but lying about, but on a much bigger scale. So this is cut and dry. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, um, we have a lot of hurdles, but um, we, we are moving forward. Um, we've started a crowdfunding page. Um, we, um, my attorney feels very confident. His, um, his complaint is 210 pages. It's very, goes in, uh, in the depth with, uh, everybody who's involved and what they did and how they harassed us and, and basically, um, how they kept myself from making a living. And again, it's not about money. It's the, what they did and how they did it. But it is and, about money because if they ruin people that tell the truth and ruin people that stand up, it scares others. So, no, so this is a war. People, they, they, they try to strangle you. It's what they do. No, you're exactly right, Alex. Um, the, the thing of it is, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not numb to fear, but I've been in law enforcement for a long time. I mean, you know, I was in the Secret Service for 12 years. I was in the an air marshal for the last 13 years from 2003 to 2016. You know, basically being air marshal is sitting on a plane waiting for somebody to get up and try to cut your head off. So I know how to deal with the stress and the pressure. And, um, but, you know, everybody has their limits. And, and now it's time, you know, if Hillary Clinton and her group is so smart, and the reason th that they lost the election wasn't because they were incompetent, let's, let's get her in court. Let's see what she has to say. Let's see how many times she uh, denies knowing anything about it or can't remember or can't recall. And you know this as well as I do, Alex, because you're a great historian on, the, on this criminal enterprise. Um, that the Clintons seem to be. And um, so let, let's let's get some of these people in the court and see what they have to say. Absolutely. We're going to break in a few minutes, but I want to go back to what you witnessed when you were there. But And now sure. what we've seen since then, and then the same tactics they use against anybody that stands up to them. But just, just recapping what your suit gets into, what they did to you. Yeah, so... Basically, what they did was, was through their criminal, through their their methods, um, they sent people out to intimidate me in a couple of book signings. They then, in the very beginning, actually, when the book came out, um, they put so much pressure on other news channels um, not to have me on. The only ones, the people that stood up to them and had me on and gave me my my fair time to, to talk and tell the truth was Fox and radio shows like yourself, TV shows like yourself because everybody else blinked. Even a very famous uh, shock jock uh, who's been around for years told our PR people that they were so much pressure put on that they would never have me put on. And they actually sounded scared. And this is the kind of methods that they use. These are mafia tactics, you know. Sure, it's violating your free speech and, and trying to embargo you. Exactly. Hell, exactly. CNN got, says they openly tried to get YouTube to ban me, and they went and got my book deal killed, even though I can get another one. The point is that it's, it's, it's total racketeering. No, absolutely. And another good example of it is uh, a lot of your viewers might have seen this. When the book first came out, you know the TV show um, the, the View with Joy Behar? Yes. Well, I guess Joy volunteered to, to, you know, to be the talking point to slam me. And she spoke uh, two days in a row on that show about my book when it first came out. 
And of course, they were very negative. They slammed me, they called me a liar, and they repeated everything that Media Matters and David Brock were putting out there. Now that information, the way they, you know, she was reading off of um, index cards, Alex, and, and that information, that came from the Secret Service or former Secret Service person. Which again, what? violated your privacy and, and violated federal laws on information. Uh, I mean, that's, well, we'll, you're the expert, we'll, but I know that violates a lot of laws. We come back. Welcome back. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Uh, you notice that every other talk show host, which is great, from Rush Limbaugh to Sean Hannity to you name it, is talking about civil war and, and, and globalist plans to overthrow the country and the UN directing hundreds of millions of people into Europe to collapse at their own admissions. And people are like, Alex, I'm getting all these calls. Why aren't you covering it? Because we told you 20 years ago. And it's not that I'm that smart. I read what Soros and uh, Peter Sutherland, who died this year, and the UN said, and I knew they were powerful billionaires, and I knew they meant business. So, yeah, the mainline GOP now gets it. The Democrats are going into full weatherman terrorist mode. You're going to have cops shot this summer. You're going to have bombings. You're going to have it all. I mean, it's already happening, and it's going to get bad. But what we're hitting at here is the counterstrike. I mean, look, I'm not even looking for Soros news. And Bloomberg... Soros backs personal injury lawsuits in market with 20% returns. He just backs all these lawyers in all these frivolous stuff. And what does it do? Where did he make his hundreds of billions? Betting against economies and crashing them and destroying pension funds. And then the Young Turks and CNN all worship him. And then he quarterbacks as the private intelligence agency with his son, who's in the documents trying to fund race riots in the country. And where are the indictments? And God help us. I mean, you can't even make up how bad they are. Uh, it, it, it is incredible, but somebody's filing suit against them. And again, this idea, there are thousands of people listening right now who don't know that you're being sued as your business because of Soros. I mean, let me, let me tell you, I don't give him unnatural powers, but it, it's like, I think he appears in a ball of smoke or something like the devil. The guy, every time we turn over a rock or get investigate something, it's not even hiding, it's him. And, and he's the one in the WikiLeaks saying, we're going to have the UN take over the internet and censor all nationalists and kick them off. And then that didn't happen, so now they're in charge of the template that the EU's putting in and that Google's put in to censor everybody and shadow ban everybody. And then I'm sitting there explaining it to the White House last week, to senior people, and, and they literally don't understand it all. So, man, I tell you, it's just crazy, but it's good to see people waking up and... We're joined right now, we're going to take your calls the next hour and get to a lot more, by a Secret Service agent who has been through a lot uh, dealing with all of this. And the article is the Western Journalism Center, the great folks at World Net Daily. Ex-Clinton Secret Service agent files conspiracy charges against Hillary, Bill, Podesta, Soros, the whole stinking lot. And it just goes into it all. But... Well, 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 we got like eight minutes left here, and I appreciate you coming on with us. What do you think is most important to impart to people? I, I think these folks are dug in, but they're on their heels, and we've all sacrificed so much, and, and, and the average American doesn't know how much they've paid just because of these people and how they, they have this anti-American system they admit, and at every level, if it's bad, you catch Soros and the Clintons behind it, and selling us out to the communist Chinese, that's coming out in the news about Comey. I mean, the... Where did they, or is it America so open they've exploited that? Is it that they hate America or that we're just, we're just wide open so we were the most prime target? Yeah, they're taking advantage of our open system, absolutely. Um, that may be, not be what they started out to do, but it's clearly what they've been doing for the last 25 or 30 years. And, and, and again, you know, my lawsuit is to try to bring that out into the public. I mean, this is, this is you know, there's not many civilian RICO suits out there. Um, we, we're purposely doing it in, in a way to, uh, in, in the District of Columbia court to try to give us the best chance of, of it moving forward. Um, Alex, if we get to the point of discovery of evidence, that will be a big deal. And, uh, and you know, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. Um, you know, I don't know exactly who, who, who told, um, uh, these, these news agencies, uh, at the time of my first book, not to um, 
um, have me on, but I'm pretty sure. Well, we do know. We know it was the Clinton. We do know that the that, that the Clinton people called them and put so much pressure on them. And then these same people are the people that gave Joy Behar her talking points that they had gotten, like I mentioned before, from either somebody in the Secret Service or that wasn't the Secret Service, who either lied or was incompetent and didn't know really what happened. So, well, they admit Joy Behar is a direct conduit, Soros, Podesta, all of them. Uh, even a lot of the comedy shows admit they get their orders directly from it, and they're all organized to lie about you and then release your private info out of your file, twisted. Uh, yeah, that is that is definitely the definition of racketeering. Why don't yeah. you describe what racketeering is for people that don't know? No, exactly. So if we get to the point of discovery and this when this moves forward, this will be great, and it will take some time, but we'll be able to show the spider web or tentacles of what they are doing, and 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 and, um, and see if we can get somebody held accountable. I, what I want is my day in court. I want my day in court, and I want these people that I worked with and protected to stand there and, and have to explain how what I said wasn't true. You know, how is it that I couldn't have seen what I saw? when I was subpoenaed six times by the Starr investigation, and eventually Judge, Supreme Court Justice Rehnquist ordered me to testify or go to jail. I did everything I could, the correct thing at the time to protect them, and then, you know, they, when I come out to tell my side of the story and the truth, they uh, slander me, they, they, they have this, they just fit me right in with the rest of their conspiracy that's going on, you know, with slandering people and-, and, uh, and Bottom line, bottom line, when people like Bongino say, Obama's worse than you know, worse than you can say, uh, without, I know, it's a lot of it, you know, they come after you, you're not supposed to get into a lot of it, but just what you can tell people is in a snapshot. I mean, cause I've talked to people that knew him well, other people have gone public, FBI people as well. Right. Throwing fits, breaking things, screaming, yelling, biting the carpet, uh, you know, uh, defiling things. Crack pipes, mouse say tongue stuff on Christmas trees, just really mentally ill, sick stuff. Yeah. Yes. So I don't want to, I see we have about three minutes. I want to, when you interviewed me the first time. Well, we got more time. We'll go into the next hour too, but just keep going. Sure. You, um, you interviewed me for the first book, Prices of Character. And while we were talking, you brought up um, about the Chinese generals coming to visit the Clinton administration. And that was one of the things that I purposely didn't write about because I felt like I would be stepping on a landmine. But when you brought it up, I wish you, you could have seen the look on my face. I mean, I was stunned because you had it nailed. And I'm gonna Brother, tell I had the Clintons call me when I was 25 years old and offered to hire me to not cover it. And I was on one radio station. Yeah. So believe me, I knew that it was on Target. Yeah, so, so what happened was um, one morning I came into work and the technical services division called me at my post right outside the Oval Office and said, look at the schedule. Do you see those Chinese businessmen? And I said, yes. He goes, they're not. They're Chinese generals. There's five of them. They'll be dressed in suits. We know they're coming in. If they go anywhere out of the norm, in other words, if they, if they go out of the Oval Office and go anywhere in the complex, please write it down. And I said, okay, no problem. And um, so these guys showed up at the west um, northwest gate. Um, they had some trouble getting in because they had bags that they didn't want to x-rayed. And so anyway, they did come in, it did happen. And then the, the reason I talk about it now is because one of the things that the, the Clinton um, campaign, his second campaign, eventually had to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars of fines for was this scandal with taking money, illegal money from the Chinese, either people, corporations or individuals, which is kind of all one and the same. So you nailed it. Uh, I'm sorry, I was uncomfortable about talking about it at the time, but if, if you could have seen inside my head when you were talking about it, it was hilarious. Well, they had a senior member of the Democratic Party in Texas who was in the legislature call me when I just played the clip off C-SPAN because nobody covered it, and I talked about it some, and, I, and, and it was damage control. I'm sure they were calling a lot of folks. And they offered me a job, all this other stuff, and I just said, no way, I'm going to put it back on. Then I aired it the next week. They got, then they moved to fire me, and then I got physically attacked in a parking lot. And then I had people put, uh, you know, stuff in my gasoline, uh, and, and, I, and I didn't back off at that point, but, and, and then it went away. Uh, but, you know, I've experienced the Clintons, but imagine the web of power they had that I was some yeah. dude with a local access TV show and a popular radio show, and I guess by then yeah. I was doing a shortwave show too, but this is like, 97, 98.
and, yeah. and, 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 and they had their people literally offering to hire me for the Democratic Party if I would just shut up. That just shows their tentacles. Yeah. So, so now we fast forward all these years, and Bill Clinton's not in office, so we can't scrutinize him like we did. And he's sitting on this huge pile of cash, which is the Clinton Foundation. And in some ways, they're now they're more dangerous than ever. And this is the way I see it. All right, let's come back and do five more minutes because I want to ask where you think this is going. Strzok is testifying in secret right now. I saw him all smart-ass walking in about three hours ago. Uh, and just what it's like to know there's this cabal of people up there that covered up for her, and then they're going after Trump, and there's literally nothing but a bimbo getting paid off a decade or so ago. I mean, it, it's just it's just crazy. You know, I know why they came after me when I was 25, 26 years old. We did get some number one ratings in Austin, but that wasn't it. They saw it as little embers or like cigarettes in a prairie that could start a fire. The Western Journalism Center, the sort of World Net Daily, they got documents from Judicial Watch from not from the Clinton Foundation, but the library a few years ago. Remember, Joseph Farah came on, and it was them in 1993 when they first got in, 94, saying, we've got to stop any type of independent liberal, conservative, pro-veterans groups, no independent media. We're going to call them conspiracy theorists. We're going to get them sued. We're going to ridicule them if they sell books. We can't let them create their own economy. So that's all that was, was just keeping all opposition out, very sophisticated tyrants. What must it be like for them now as a former Secret Service agent, Air Marshal, and uh, the Air Force Police, all the rest of it, um, for you to see their empire crumbling? Gary, what do you think they're going to do now? Well, they're going to continue with their mission, which is, to me, you know, you, you can say overthrow our... our uh, our democracy, or excuse me, not our democracy, but our republic, um, our constitutional, our constitutional republic. Um, they're going to keep doing what they what they've been doing. There's no stopping them. Um, it's really like a cancer, and I I know that sounds a little overstated, but no, it's it not. is a cancer. Everything they do is destructive. Yeah, it, it is, and, and and you know, even when they can tell the truth, and we've seen this many a time, Alex. Even when they can tell the truth, they don't tell the truth. Um, so my my hope is that, that my suit goes forward. Um, they're going to keep doing what they're doing. I hope other people keep coming forward and trying to do and bring the truth out like you do and, and, and a lot of these other people. I agree because um, everybody needs to sue them who has standing. And, and yeah. there are a lot of folks listening. Just if enough people, this is, this is what they're trying to shut us down with, and all we want to do is bring the country back. Right, exactly. And everything, you watch what they try to do. They, they, they fund... Anything that's negative about the Second Amendment, the First Amendment, they're trying to destroy our ability to not only voice our opinion, but physically protect ourselves. And I, I've seen that for years, um, and it concerns me greatly. And um, I agree, since I asked the question earlier, and sorry to interrupt you. What do you make of the FBI cabal up there, and, and, and uh, where do you think all that's going? Yeah, it's very similar to, to the executives I saw in the Secret Service. Um, Listen, the FBI and the Secret Service and some of these other agencies were corrupted back in the early 90s by the Clintons when yep. they first got there. Th that trail is, is very easy to read um, and see. Um, what what percentage now, would you say of it have they compromised? Uh, mainly the top echelons, like Trump says? Yeah, absolutely, the top echelons. And, 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 and it's proved itself. Um, there's many videos on, on um, YouTube of former directors of the Secret Service and of the FBI giving testimony and getting caught lying and then saying, oh, do you want me to just change my testimony? Well, no, you got caught lying. These people, once they get to a certain level, they're not about doing their jobs. They're about protecting their standing in the agency and growing their agency. Because every government agency wants to be bigger and bigger and have a bigger budget. I think these guys in the FBI got on the wrong track and, and clearly, I don't see anything that can fix what we know about it so far. I mean, those emails are very disturbing. They're, they're, it's open and shut there where he's not going to be president. We're going to stop him. We're going to basically right. set him up. Exactly. And, 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 and you could see they thought Hillary was going to win. They were calling her the president a year before. So they did all this crazy stuff, not realize. wow, they have really, they have really, really stepped in it. No, I agree. Think about that, Alex. They're calling her the president to appease her ego because the deal was already set. There was, they didn't swear her in in the interview. She had all these lawyers. 
And what happened to the FBI where they let so many lawyers in the room that they intimidate the FBI? That's not the way it was when they were coming after me to force me to testify against Bill Clinton. It's just bizarre. And you got sucked into this, but once you got in there, you've stood up, done a great job. Uh, where's the best place for people to find your newest book? You can find uh, both my books on Amazon, at bookstores, Barnes & Noble, uh, Books A Million, BAM. Uh, thank you very much for mentioning it. Hey, they're trying to destroy me too, brother. We're all in this together. Gary, thank yes, you sir. so much. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, we got critical breaking news on their plan to launch a civil war. It's real. It's already happening. And how we stop it straight ahead with Mike Adams in studio. Counterthink.com. Mike Adams here, the health ranger. It is Sunday night, June 24th, I believe. And I apologize for my appearance. I'm a little sweaty. I've been, I've been working outside. America is facing a, a, an assault, an invasion. And if we don't get serious about this, Right now, we are going to lose our country. We're very close. We may be past the tipping point already. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. So I'm going to start this out by citing some, just some facts. I'll just do some factual statements, some irrefutable facts, a series of statements. And then I'll talk about the interpretation, connecting the dots, and what those facts actually mean, and why we could lose America if we don't stop what's happening right now. So does that sound fair enough? I'll start with the facts and then I'll, I'll let you know when I go into the interpretation. So let's start with some facts. So leftists, we'll, we'll use leftists and liberals synonymously here. Uh, liberals, you could say, are verbally assaulting and shouting down Trump supporters and members of the Trump staff in public places such as restaurants, movie theaters, you know, it, it could include other places as well. I mean, it absolutely will. But leftists believe that people who support Trump do not have the right to eat at a restaurant or engage in any other function in a public place. That's a fact. Now, I'll come back to that in the interpretation. Leftists believe that America should have no borders whatsoever, that no one should be stopped from entering the country. Leftists believe that the minute illegals come into the United States, they should be granted voting rights. Leftists believe that also the minute illegals come into the United States, they should start to receive welfare benefits, entitlements, free education, free health care, and so on. Leftists are now protesting ICE enforcement offices uh, across the country. The protests are growing. And they want to abolish ICE, which of course stands for Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Leftists want to shut down any enforcement of the United States border, especially the southern border. Leftists, uh, they believe and they state that they, they think that Trump is actually Hitler. They now believe and state that people who support Trump are Nazis. They use this designation to justify the violence that they are carrying out against Trump supporters through acts of domestic terrorism carried out by groups, radical left-wing groups such as Antifa. Antifa has systematically and deliberately violently attacked Trump supporters, bashing them over the heads with bike locks, for example, felony assaults, and other types of assaults. Uh, again, these are straight facts. This is, this is not interpretation yet. These are things that are happening in America. Fact, the left-wing media is complicit in whipping up mass hysteria among leftists. Fact, the left-wing media is using fake news photographs in order to accomplish that goal. Uh, for example, that screaming, crying, two-year-old migrant girl photo has been revealed as a hoax. She was not separated from her mother. Uh, her family was well off. They actually paid a coyote $6,000 to carry them across the border to transport them. You know, coyotes are human traffickers. And that little girl was never separated from her mother. She was simply hungry, according to uh, her own father, by the way. That photograph was used deceptively by the media in order to whip up mass hysteria using a false premise. Other photographs circulated by leftists are also a hoax. For example, there's a, a very popular photograph of a, uh, a, looks like a young child in a cage. 
Uh, it was a zoomed in, cropped in photo. It was actually the child of a parent in Texas who they had set up a cage in an indoor facility in order to protest uh, border policies. And they put their own children in that cage and then they took pictures of their own children. And then those pictures got shared by other people who said, look, children are being kept in cages by Trump. Okay, that's another fact, straight fact. Fact, President Obama separated parents from children. Fact, the Democrats hope to bring in as many illegals as possible so that they can win more elections because people from impoverished nations and Central and South American nations tend to vote Democrat. That's a fact. Uh, fact, many of the so-called children that are being brought into America are actually able-bodied, uh, what, what we would consider to be adults, 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, actually uh, military age men that the New York Times in particular calls migrant children who were separated from their parents. Okay, I could, I could probably think of a few more facts, but I think you get the picture. Now, let's go into interpretation. This is the important part. Interpretation. The United States of America is being attacked. The United States of America is being invaded, assaulted by foreign nationals who are being used as pawns by anti-American forces inside the United States, which includes the left-wing media that despises America, that hates democracy, that hates the outcome of the 2016 election, and has been working feverishly to try to overthrow Trump. Interpretation. Left-wing politicians cannot win debates and arguments based on reason and historical facts and logic. All right, the report goes on for about another 25 minutes. It's very, very important. And Mike Adams, the health ranger, shot that Saturday. Now you know the big term is civil war. The Democrats are surrounding everybody. They're calling for violence. Uh, there's so many reports of these, I can't even keep track of it anymore. This is a real plan. And people keep asking, how do we keep predicting what's going to come next? Because we don't go off what's in the mainstream news. We go off the battle plan of Soros and the globalists and what they've done in other countries, and, and we've gotten secret Antifa documents. We've gotten secret Soros documents. Why do you think Soros has people suing me? B because we'll actually go after them. And the, I've talked to the folks in the White House, I'll leave it at that, and they say, listen, Alex, we know you're dead on. Everybody else is scared to do it. We need you to continue to be what you've been, shock troops, to bring out these stories, to take the attack and make it safe for others. Now, the enemy already figured that out a long time ago. I hadn't really completely figured it out until recently. I knew we were key to all this. That's why it's great that Mike is willing, he's a really smart guy, I've been doing this for decades, to be a shock troop, and all of you are as well. We've got to make it safe for the Hannity's and the Rush Limbaugh's. But the good news is the official GOP is putting out videos that look like Mike or I produced it, because it's the truth. But if we get caught flat-footed, they're planning major riots this summer. They're planning major impeachment pushes. They're planning major probably false flags against themselves. Hollywood, it's all geared up to this. And they're making their move. And so that's their talking point, that all Trump supporters deserve to die. Or we're all Nazis, say Donnie Deutsch. Uh, so, uh, Mike, that's a powerful report you break down. Uh, by the way, Justice Kennedy just resigned. We'll tell you more about that. We told you that last year and this year with Roger Stone that he'd be gone by the middle of this year. Sure enough, he is. Uh, so, so we'll give you, you know, tomorrow's news today. We already told you that a year ago, so there's no need to cover it. Uh, but that's another big win uh, for Trump. Uh, he's winning these primaries with the Republicans. Got a few commies getting in in New York and stuff, showing the future of the Democratic Party is them being who they say they are, Mike. Well, if I could add to that, Alex, and, and thank you, by the way, for, for running that video. You know, I came to that conclusion independently over the weekend. I mean, th this was not coordinated in any way. You and I didn't talk until after that that aired. You know, I didn't talk to anybody in the Trump administration. It just hit me like it hit you, I think. It just independently, it's like you can tell they're making in. their move. We're, the Civil War is here. It's happening. This is a planned invasion, but it's a different kind of warfare. Instead of kinetic warfare, dropping bombs, they're, they're using human shields as a fulcrum in order to commit a kind of warfare that you might call social warfare or socially engineered warfare. Terrorism. It's a, it's a different kind of war. And notice they target the infrastructure, the borders, the government to bring it down. And then Bill Maher yeah. says, we want to crash America. Yes, exactly. Their plan is now unveiled. The mask is off. 
Uh, no, no more do they have to pretend and that they, they love America. Until this, everything else has been a beta test. The full assault starts now. America is fighting for its life, and so is the world. Mike Adams is so on top stuff. He sent me a message a few days ago saying, watch out. Antifa is going to be poisoning stuff in the mail with chemicals and with, and with drugs. And then it's in the news. It's on Infowars.com that cops, people are reportedly putting it on flyers. They think it's a flyer. And then, and, then, and then describe what the, uh, the, the Chinese opioid is? Well, the, it's called fentanyl, and they use it now to augment opioid drugs. And fentanyl can be ordered via the mail. Uh, it, it's shipped in via U.S. mail from China. And uh, fentanyl is a contact drug slash poison where they can put it on something that, <clears throat> excuse me, that they know you're going to touch. And if you touch it, you're, you're intoxicated with fentanyl uh, immediately. It, it, and, and they can crank up the potency to levels that make it incredibly toxic. So all of us, you know, whether you're a Trump supporter or a prominent conservative, you know, anybody, even like Sean Hannity should be careful about this as well. But our laboratory can test for over 40,000 chemicals. So, you know, like I said, Alex, if you, if, if there's something suspicious, suspicious. We can call you and get it to ex you. Exactly. We, we use a mass spec system. We can uh, scan for any of those, any of those drugs. Now it's done. I have been so obsessed with covering the news today that I plugged one time in the first hour, and, I, and I've been doing this so much that we won't be here if I don't start plugging in. If listeners don't start buying the products, uh, and I want to thank you all for your support in the past. It's just that we have 50% off on our fluoride-free super blue toothpaste fortified with colloidal silver and iodine for adults and children, two different types, then three different sizes of immune gargle that you can gargle with, brush your teeth, and then even swallow some. It's it's, it's registered as a supplement. <coughs> it's amazing. Uh, it's a great compliment to the X2. It's all 50% off, whether it's the mouthwash, the immune gargle, the super blue toothpaste uh, for adults and children. 50% off right now. You save $100 off the already super low price, high quality Alexa Pure Breeze air purification systems. The comparable models are $500. They just mark it up and rip you off. Uh, it, it's amazing. So it's, it's a great uh, four-stage filter, ion filter, you name it, uh, for your house. Infowarsstore.com is the umbrella site. Infowarslife.com is a subsite. And, and I'm not complaining. It's my fault. I could even take some sponsors and do some stuff. I get so focused on news and production and fighting Soros and the censors that I don't get around to plugging here. But here's the deal. And this is what I'm talking to you about, Mike, is, 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 is offensively. If people just know that you're going to get criticized sharing Infowars links or News Wars links or natural news links, they admit they're doing shadow banning. So what? It isn't about getting patted on the head by globalists. It's a total revolution on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube. Uh, you know, like, what do you think of this information? Or, or, or that's how you keep reaching people because we have to continue to raise the alarm to the general public that is on the fence because we're beginning to win. All the numbers show minorities, women, uh, rallies Trump's having. Uh, they're, they're questioning folks, and 60 to 70 percent are. Democrats and minorities, uh, this is this is really scaring the globalists. So we're about to go over the top on all this. There'll still be some major fights ahead, but now is the time for financial support. But but more importantly, hand telling people about newswars.com or prisonplanet.com or naturalnews.com. And, and we're going to do like Mike's done and start dozens and dozens of other sites to get around some of the censors with keywords. But <clears throat> this is a war, and the president is getting briefed on on Google censorship, on Twitter, on Facebook, on, on Amazon. And, and, and so he's trying to codify a plan for trust busting on that. I, I can tell you uh, that I was asked by high-level folks what I thought was front and center. And, and then I briefed them on this. And I told them, you should be briefed by your new head of the campaign. He's an expert on it. And they said, oh, well, you know, we, we do understand that. Uh, and so just like Trump's main mission is to turn the economy on, stabilize things, and, and then he's ready to move against the enemy. Well, they know that. Mueller's heading up, speeding up the investigation when he said it would last years because they know there's nothing. They're closing their timetable to 2018. They're making their move. And Roger Stone's never been wrong. He agrees with me that if they can't get impeachment going or they think they're going to lose 2018, they're going to try to kill the president. They're going to try to have a bunch of civil unrest going on while that's happening because people just say, oh, you're against the police, you're against the government, you're anti-government. No, I was against the globalist Southern Poverty Law Center, ADL, UN, now officially trying to take over the police, the military, our culture. They're failing. Turned out our outreach, the military, your outreach, all of you's outreach, Ron Paul's outreach, but mainly the globalists coming in and briefing them that the UN's going to take over America and gun owners are banned. What does the UN and ADL and Southern Poverty Law Center think was going to happen when they heard me on the radio saying this is going on for over a decade?
And then Obama gets in and they start saying, Christians and gun owners and veterans are the enemy. The UN will run police departments. Families are bad. World government is good. Uh, communism is good. Uh, and then your health care is going to be free. And then it's not. And, 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 and so now I'm very loyalist uh, to, to the military, the police, the president, uh, because they're trying to execute the Constitution Bill of Rights. They're trying to turn the country back on. They're trying to erase all this mental illness and the psychic, you know, poison of the globalist. And, and so as long as they're executing the Bill of Rights Constitution, I'm totally behind them. The media tries to go, oh, Jones is suddenly this. No, no, I knew what Trump was doing. I got on board early. I want to change the world. And now worldwide globalism's in trouble. Worldwide, we're winning. So this is my point, Mike. I'm here to take on this. 1776 worldwide. It's not that America is going to be out there militarily running things. It's an America ideas renaissance. The world's hungry. America helping to create a new global coalition of people that are capitalists, that are free market, that want to work together, peer to peer, nation to nation, uh, not centralized to the UN and the globalist. The comeback of the free market, the comeback of Americana globally, I believe July 4, 2018 is the demarcation line of the globalist launching their attempted overthrow of our move to fix things peacefully. We have to recognize it as July 4th, number two, second American revolution, this time global, because all the pieces are now converging perfectly on the date. It is the date that we have to declare the second American revolution worldwide for freedom against collectivism, the globalist, the corrupt crony capitalist billionaires, those are suppressing technology, suppressing medicine, suppressing all these, suppressing humanity. This, I could feel it. This is it, and the enemy sees it as that as well. I predict they're going to pull stuff on 4th of July. I'm telling you, we are entering a magic moment 242 years later. Mike Adams. And I think what you are doing here is a microcosm, really, of exactly how we rebuild America. I mean, you think about your revenue sources here, InfoWars store. What are you selling? Products that awaken people's minds, cognitive enhancement products, health-enhancing products. What funds the mainstream media, or, you know, legacy media? Toxic antidepressant drugs, brain damaging products, chemotherapy, cancer treatment centers. It causes chemo brain. And I, I just brought in a story here, metal fillings. Now the BBC is actually re reporting that metal fillings leak mercury when your teeth are scanned by dentists. So the mass poisoning of the American people is happening through left-wing media. It's happening through chemicals. It's happening through heavy metals, through modern dentistry. They're targeting and, our children? Yes. See, it's it's the mass poisoning of America. They they despise America. They want to bring it down. And as you said, there is now an awakening like you and I have never seen. I mean, your message actually hasn't changed. You've evolved, but you're consistent with pro-liberty, pro-individual rights. And yet now, suddenly, I see the independent media waking up like never before. It's turning, but the enemy is now going to go for broke, and they're going to compress the next 10 years of their plan into the next six months. That's, that's right. That's right. And, and by the way, I, I think that Maxine Waters, they're trying to shut her down so rapidly because she is voicing what all of the leftists are thinking, but they are too you know, cautious to say it publicly. Maxine Waters is what happens when you tear the, the mask off of leftists and their authoritarian tyranny comes out. That's what Maxine Waters is doing. She's handed us a gift. It's insight into the, the dark way, spirit of leftists. And by the way, I agree, and I wish no harm upon her. I predict if she doesn't shut up, she's about to have a stroke and die. I think the Democrats are going to kill her to shut her up because she is about to really accelerate our victory. Thank you, witch. Well, everything is compressing. You've got uh, Trump setting a meeting with Putin. That's up on Infowars.com. You've got the opposition being canceled and then them bitching and grappling about it last night on Comedy Central. Another system, you know, trying to launch another Colbert-style report to lie about us. They admit it was based on us. Their main job was to try to get us shut down, so now they're shut down. They don't want to watch their crap. That's coming up in the next segment. But I meant to even start the show with something, but now I can't find it in my stack. It's just an incredible article where John McCain was quarterbacking. This has now come out via Judicial Watch documents. Uh, was quarterbacking and running an entire operation. There it is. McCain's subcommittee staff director urged the IRS to target conservative groups and, quote, bankrupt them. So I've got it in my stack. If you guys can reprint that. Uh, and, and again, sensational. But here's what's more sensational. People ask why Trump can't get everything done. Trump was advised by Paul Ryan and others to appoint this guy at the IRS and to run things today, and they're still persecuting conservatives and conservative groups that want to get tax-exempt status and all this. So 
Think about that. Uh, he'll be gone very, very soon, just like we identified the Soros mole, and, and it took us six months to finally uh, get Trump to look into it. He discovered it and fired them all, McMaster, all of them. So, I, and, and, and listen, the White House, let's just say the campaign, the Patriots are literally asking you to keep ferreting stuff out, keep sending it, that they can't keep track of it all. He's got tens of thousands of people under him just in the first level, and they, they come in just like McCabe came in and said, sir, I'm loyal. I agree you've been persecuted. We're gonna, we're gonna, and, and he was the guy who was running the fake conspiracy. So, so uh, it's just incredible that this is going on, Mike Adams. Well, the, the, the deep state swamp, uh, the draining that swamp needs to, of course, accelerate. But I think right now, before the midterm elections, Trump has to be cautious because Trump is winning right now the midterm elections in essence because of the unhinged nature of the left. We don't want to disturb that. You know, Trump doesn't want to come out and let's say start issuing 200 arrest warrants for deep state operatives who need to be arrested, treasonous operators inside every level of the DOJ, some in the FBI, some in the State Department, and so on. But you want to wait on that, I think, until after the midterm elections because you don't want to give Democrats a chance to change the traction, to change the, the momentum. Right now, Democrats are losing big time because they're insane. And they're, you know, Maxine Waters, again, is a gift to the GOP. I hope she goes out there and opens her mouth and keeps screaming and shouting and calling for violence and inciting mobs right now because that is what the left actually wants. She's putting a voice to it, and the reaction is going to be a red wave in the midterms, not a blue wave. So right now, I would say Trump is probably, my guess is he's probably being very cautious, watching and waiting. But after the midterms, once we have a, a at least holding on to the House, holding on to the Senate, Trump is going to be on fire and unleashed. That's my prediction, Alex. That's the word, too. And he's just stabilized the economy, and then really he's going to go after these folks. And, again, they did the whole Russia thing because they were in bed with China. They wanted to distract onto that. But uh, they don't have anything to lose now. And I think Mueller's going to go ahead with his made-up stuff and put it out. So what do you expect to, to, to see there? Because Mueller's now saying... And they've got Senator Warner bragging. They're going to release it right before the election. Well, it's going to backfire. It's absolutely going to backfire because think about it. The vast majority of Americans no longer trust the media. I think a recent poll just came out that showed that the majority of Americans believe that the media is deliberately publishing and spreading fake news, that they know it's oh, fake. Oh, yeah. I've gotten more support just on the street and people Yep. since the media puts all these hoaxes out about me and these fake lawsuits. Pe people... People go, Alex, we know that's not true. And and, and, yeah. and, and and when we really knew you were good was when they all really came after you like this. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it all backfires in their face because they no longer have the moral high ground. They no longer are trusted. I mean, how many times have they come out with something like that that hoaxed, staged photo that became, you know, the... the, the little girl the, was never the, taken from her the parents. Time Magazine, right, exactly. And now, you know, the truth comes out. Time Magazine is too late. They didn't vet the photo. They published it. They can't go back in time and remove that from the when magazine When I saw cover. Tom Arnold go, I met with Trump's lawyer, and he's going to spill the beans with me together. He's got all the criminal <laughs> proof. Yeah. I knew it'd be a selfie in a hotel. 20 seconds. Yeah, and I But too. I knew instantly, because it's Tom Arnold. I you mean, know, these people are just lying scum. Well, the other thing, Alex, uh, let's think about this. They are actually not very intelligent either. I'm talking about these deranged, unhinged leftists. All they have left is crying, screaming, blaming, and violently attacking because they're, they're animalistic. They've lost the higher brain function. Think about it. They're watching CNN and buying pharmaceuticals and poisoning their brains. Your viewers are, are going to InfoWars store. They're buying cognitive enhancing supporting products. I know I mentioned this before, but, no, but it's, it's worth true. mentioning. Everything You're getting more intelligent. They want to abort everybody's babies. They want everybody on psychotropics. Uh, uh, they want more nuclear reactors. That's the new leftist thing. It's bizarre. They flipped. And and, and, and then meanwhile, they want to shut down supplements. They, and they say, I'm bad to say filter water. You're absolutely right. right. And then they want to firebomb Stephen Crowder. He talks to like 20 liberals. And they go, yeah, we do. Well, you know, that's okay. See, Stephen Crowder is a smart but guy. You, but if you dump gasoline on them and let them... <laughs> right. I mean, right. I would never do that, but I mean, of it's course. like they, they don't even get it. But they're, they are actually, and I mean this in a medical sense, they are stupid. They, they've they lost their higher well, brain function. Studies show they have lower IQs. They, yeah, they have lower brainstem function, and what they're trying to bring across the border right now, frankly, you know, even though I've lived in South America, I've been a resident of Ecuador before, but what they're trying to bring across is not the best people of Ecuador or the best people of Honduras and so on. 
They're trying to bring across the most illiterate people possible who are, in many cases, well, fleeing by the way, those Most nations. of the parents get killed coming through. It is beyond any nightmare movie. Yeah. Hundreds of thousands dead, road warrior hell, and then none of them are guilty of anything. It's all us. We're bad. We did something wrong. Right, but see, from the Democrats' point of view, if you can think Democrats can't win, if you can debate or argue the Demo Democrats can't win, they can only win if they silence you or dumb None you down or poison you. That came off slave plantations in El Salvador, Nicaragua, all the other places. Right. And your husband's dead, and the Democratic Party takes you in and indoctrinates you into La Reconquista and into Mecha and La Raza and everything else, while well, you're going to go to New York and vote and put in a communist who and just won. And she said... Uh, this Alexander Cortez said, winning the Democratic primary, moreover, not only is this about gender and race, this is about class, communism. <laughs> and she wants right. free everything. And she wants to abolish ICE. She wants no border control whatsoever. Think about it. She but is calling for an invasion. Cover a leftist event, they call the police on you and demand you be arrested. Yes. Oh, yeah. they call the police just like that. Yeah. Well, where this is going is Democrats, the, I mean, again, the reason Google and Facebook and Twitter, the, the reason they have to silence conservative viewpoints is because if there is an allowed debate, Democrats lose the debate. If there is allowed free speech, Democrats lose because rationality and reason are rising in America among those people who can see what's going on because there are enough people who learned real history, who grew up in a time before the mass indoctrination of children who see what's happening to their country. Oh, absolutely. And they're not going to stand by and just do nothing. They say that the numbers vary. It was 2 million last year. Now they're saying it's 5 million have tried to flee Venezuela and it's causing the collapse of all the countries around it. And so now people fleeing communism... Uh, just because they all voted for it. Remember, it was the first first Hugo Chavez was a democratic socialist. Right. Then he was a socialist. Then he said, no, I'm a communist. Right. And now it's totally collapsed well, when it course. was a wealthy country. And now there's millions of people coming this way, and the U.N. has got them all ready and ordered, a bunch of Venezuelans, who uh, uh, something like 80% are going to vote Democrat. And, and, then, and then they'll turn the same into that. Exactly, exactly. They, they want to recreate run? the same chaos that they're fleeing because they don't understand how to how to participate in a free society, in a constitutional republic, and the gift that that has been to all of us Americans, and that gift is being thrown away by leftists, who are just abandoning this incredible gift that our forefathers People gave us. People start screaming at Stephen Crowder when he's here in Texas, and the Democrats are saying, we're going to firebomb you. They we want free health care. Canada's great. He's like, I'm from Canada. Both my aunts just died. They couldn't get health care. Every Canadian I know comes here for health care. Doesn't mean ours is perfect. The National Health Service is horrible in the U.K. Yeah, they got more doctors per capita anywhere in the world. In, in Cuba, they give you a cane for a bad knee and a cane if you go blind. Yeah, so it's a war on human freedom. The war is ramping up, and we are being targeted in the United States as the next intended destruction. Because the globalists don't want prosperity. They've already got theirs. They're right. blowing up the engine. They're trying to blow our warp dry before we go to the next level. Now, Mike Adams is going to be hosting the fourth hour with a critical report on the global UN depopulation blueprint. Disease X they've been hyping and the new bird flu strains before they said could wipe out, you know, billions if it killed a small percentage. Now they're saying it kills 40 percent when the number of dead hit like 6,000. We didn't see it in the news anymore a week ago. So Mike's done some research on that. That's coming up in the fourth hour. He's going to be hosting in the war room with, of course, Owen Schroyer. Uh, Roger Stone is in the air to D.C. for important meetings. He'll have more exclusive breaking news. I want to jam in a lot of stuff here at the end. But this article out of Judicial Watch, it's another out of AP. Um, in fact, I had the better article that, that in here in my stack that I can never find that actually, here it is, that uh, went through it all, um, where you have the former head of, of McCain's committee, we now learn his head staffer running Lois Lerner and Obama. That's why they called him their president. Remember just last year? Uh, Obama and Keene, the former vice presidential candidate Hillary, they called him their president, their leader. <laughs> Don't forget, McCain, a McCain staffer was also delivering the dossier to the FBI. Exactly. So, so, yeah. so really, he's at the highest levels right up there with Hillary. Uh, you know, now karmically dying of a brain tumor. Reportedly, he's pretty much gone to die any day. But if you look at this, they've released it, and then Trump didn't even know Kerner was appointed by President Trump as special counsel for the United States Office of the Special Counsel. So think about that. They have got this mole that he didn't know about, just like he didn't know about McCabe. 
being put in a key position. And thank God Judicial Watch got this information. I keep going back to, we were talking about the White House and the campaign. The campaign is headed up by a guy that's a technology and, uh, internet expert. The former head of their internet operations is now the head of the campaign. They all know what's going on. The problem is the president's blocked at every level by deep staters, and he doesn't fully understand the internet, but he knows censorship uh, is going on. That's why he gives more speeches and goes out more. It's why he's campaigning to get around that. But he, And he also understands that it, it's the memes and everything that the EU is trying to ban that magnify and that the machines have trouble censoring. And so they're crippling the internet. They're crippling Hollywood. They're cripp crippling the NFL to try to censor everybody. It's made everybody turn off to them, but they don't care because it's ahead of this big leftist hunt. Documents are out. They call attacking Republicans and patriots and libertarians and nationalists. They call it the hunt. So they got their fake purge movie about the KKK hunting black people in army uniforms. That's the you know out there to foment stuff. But the real hunt is going on as Democrats openly announce they're planning to get violent. So the question is, it's up to us to get the news to Trump how the shadow bans are working, and he needs to move towards antitrust against these guys. What else does he do? Uh, you're, you're a well, technologist. The, the, the purge is accelerating at every level, especially on Facebook. They've been purging even natural health and natural medicine web websites in addition to political websites or just conservative personalities. Now, this is so dangerous. It's, it's fascinating that the left calls Trump supporters Nazis, and yet one of the key elements of the Nazi regime, the Third Reich, was control over information and propaganda, Joseph Goebbels. And Facebook is following in the footsteps of Goebbels because what, what Facebook is doing is trying to now control the definition of what news is real. And even the New York Times, Alex, in an op-ed just a couple of days ago, said that this is dangerous for democracy. When you when, when the New York Times attacks Facebook, you know Facebook, Facebook also has the deep Exactly. They decide what political group or sexual preference you are by spying on you with an algorithm. Yes. And, and so it says conservative, libertarian, alt-right, whatever right. Well, the, th the thing is now, what Facebook and Google and YouTube are doing, you know, YouTube, I mean, I'm still banned on YouTube, by the way, my entire account and many others. What they're doing is saying that if you have a pro-America viewpoint, that you have no right to participate in public debate whatsoever. This is the same thing that the Red Hen restaurant was doing, saying, Sarah Sanders, you can't eat at our restaurant. And it's beyond public shaming. It's putting you in an electronic and now physical gulag to yes. shut you down. Yeah, and it's going to be pretty soon. It's going to be, oh, if you're a Trump supporter, you have to sit at the back of the bus. Well, this you is part of the Chinese restaurant. social network skill uh, listing, social uh, uh, listing, where, where now they use the Internet and all your personal activities to then have a social score that tracks everything you do. And again, that's what the Nazis did. They made you wear a pink triangle. They made you wear a yellow star. But this is literally happening and then being shared by them in real time to target you. And Mark Zuckerberg has modeled Facebook after communist China's great wall of the Internet. Remember, Zuckerberg, actually, he speaks Mandarin Chinese. Nothing wrong with that. I speak Chinese, too. But he admires communist Chinese ideals. And China required Facebook, you know, to make changes and other tech giants like Google to make changes in order to censor the truth about everything from Tiananmen Square to the Falun Gong uh, meditation group in China that's used. That's, they're arrested for organ harvesting, by the way, in China. But Zuckerberg modeled everything after By the way, that. your wife's the the Taiwanese. Point. She's Taiwan. Yes. And, and, of course, they're now, the Chinese are saying they may invade Taiwan. Yes. I mean, this is really heating up. Well, a absolutely. This is why the United States military has been running some, some uh, aircraft carriers, I believe, or, or other ships, naval ships in that area to try to warn and off the And isn't it classic Chinese. that he's worth 80-something bill, has his money offshore, pays almost no taxes, is right. married to a Chinese communist, and says that if you make $50,000 a year, you're bad. Bloomberg says you should pay more tax, too. Yeah, I mean, these are the right. most right. monstrous hypocritical people. He's not a communist. He's an evil person working with... What about Apple moving its iCloud and its and its code keys? In Reuters, they reported that, oh, well, of course, if you move to China to take advantage of tax exemption, you work with the government. So they are now merging with the communist Chinese. Yeah, and, and, and the Chinese, of course, are in, engaged in warfare against America at so many levels, including theft of intellectual property, uh, of course, monetary and financial manipulations that harm America. Uh, as well as other things. China, remember, just a couple of weeks ago, demanded that U.S. airlines change the, their definition of Taiwan to be Taiwan uh, Republic of China or uh, uh, some kind of entity of China. 
Yeah. Just like the EU is telling us what we can and can't do and announcing Article 13, Article 11 to ban memes, to right. have you go through a George Soros-funded template before you can publish anything. I mean, even Gizmodo, even Wired said this will break the Internet. It's the end of speech. But see, yep. here's the deal. The left has now signed on to this. Uh, the podcasters and folks have decided to sign on to it and not criticize us, our censorship, so they'll be next. And so they've made that decision because they want the total end of everything this is an authoritarian takeover move. They've decided no freedom can be allowed. So all you so-called liberals, all you so-called establishment types and academics that went and got the three or four degrees and can't get a job and, you know, your promise, your utopia of Hillary got in, you were all conned. You, you are you literally signing on to total tyranny. You are literally signing on to the communist Chinese. You were signing on, and plus, you're going to lose. I mean, this. but, but here's the thing. Once we yeah. take the country back legally and lawfully, these are folks allied with foreign powers that want to kill us, that want to take our rights. We have to eradicate the foreign intelligence networks that they admit China is running almost every U.S. public university. You've, you've nailed something so profound that those who think that they are fighting against Nazis are, in fact, complicit in the enemy forces that are plotting to destroy America and take down America. Soros is a Nazi collaborator. The EU was a Hitler project. Juncker is the is the grandson of the head of the Reich. Uh, Juncker, the rich, I mean, it's, it's, in, it's, they literally are, the Nazis were just one flavor yeah. of what they are. But the, the, the invaders, if you're a liberal going along with this, the invaders will eventually get around to killing you too. That's what you got to understand. To the left, you are a useful idiot just arguing for them, arguing for open borders. The globalists were targeting this. America for takedown, so they hired people and gave them an operating system of hating America as their religion. But you're not going to run the country. You're That's the right. useful idiots That's right. that opened the drawbridge. You're going to be taken down. They're going to target you eventually. It's just a matter of time because if you are, let's say you're a white middle-aged liberal who was a Hillary Clinton supporter, you have no use and, and, for the and, and the guy in, in, in New York said whites were bad, apologized for being white. Oh, yeah, right. right. Got, the, white got the leftists activated into race politics, and now they've uh, 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 elected a uh, Hispanic supremacist communist crazy lady that says white people are bad. See? And, and see how sick that is? See how sick that is? Well, it's it's suicide. These people, you know, there's something about these people, by the way, these these. A lot of them live in cities, not all of them, where they take a lot of antidepressants. They they vote for Hillary Clinton, and they are suicidal themselves. You know, antidepressants make you want to even kill yourself in some cases or kill other people. Antifa is out there saying, let's kill other people. You've got, you know, the firebombing threats, all of this. These people, not only do they want to commit suicide and destroy themselves, they want to destroy the very nation that they are part of. And they want to corrupt innocence. They want to, they're obsessed. They are spiritual saboteurs we're going to break you're taking over folks please don't forget we have our best-selling super blue family of fluoride free toothpaste fortified with the good halogen iodine colloidal silver and more they're all available at infowarsstore.com infowarslife.com takes you right to the supplement page at 50 percent off knockouts 33 percent off even though it's about to sell out hundred dollars off alexa pure breeze that's the lowest we've ever gone it's an amazing in-house uh four stage filtered it's all available at InfoWarsStore.com or 888 888-253-3139. There's a bunch of other specials as well. We told you everything that was coming. It's here. Now we're telling you how to win and go to the next level. And thanks to you spreading the word, InfoWars is still cruising straight ahead at ramming speed and delivering victory thanks to you. Reportedly, Chief Justice Kennedy has announced his retirement today from the United States Supreme Court. This is a very big deal. There's been a lot of conjecture recently about how many Supreme Court justices President Trump will be able to put on the court. And this alone is worth everything that it took to get Trump elected to the White House. Because can you imagine? I mean, right now, the, the, the liberal justices on the court are going insane. They've been going insane lately. You know, Kagan and uh, Sotomayor, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. They have been ranting with insanity about losing these decisions, such as the union dues, the, the, the mandatory fees decision, which I think came down this morning, and other decisions in recent days. I mean, you talk about winning. President Trump is winning day after day after day because of these typically five to four decisions on the Supreme Court because of Neil Gorsuch being there. Well, now imagine if those five to four decisions can become six to three decisions or seven to two decisions by 2018 or 2019. I mean, Kennedy retiring now 
you know, sometimes his decisions go either way. He's sometimes considered middle of the road depending on, on the topic. But what if someone like Ginsburg retires and then you bring in what, what we call an originalist, an originalist Supreme Court justice like Gorsuch, who can really, really enforce the true meaning of the United States Constitution as it was written by the Founding Fathers, you know, the intent that they put into that document. We could protect the basic rights of this nation, including the Second Amendment, for a generation to come. But then you always have to think, well, what if they start assassinating these people? Because we're in open warfare, it seems like right now. The left is willing to murder people. They're calling for the killing of people. And, you know, there's a lot of evidence that at least one former Supreme Court justice may have been murdered to take him out, you know, before the election, before they thought Hillary Clinton was going to come in. And this is a very serious issue. But if you are watching what's happening in our country right now and not looking at the mainstream media because they're lying to you every day, what's happening right now is the Supreme Court is being slowly but meticulously moved into a pro-Constitution stance. This is good for America. This is good for Trump. This is good for our future. So that's a big, big deal today. I, I almost, I wish I had more prep to talk about that issue, but I'm sure that Alex and others will cover it tomorrow on the Alex Jones Show as the InfoWars broadcast continues. Now, what we're going to cover here, welcome to the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. My name's Mike Adams, the Health Ranger. And I really appreciate all your feedback lately because I, I did record that, that emergency broadcast video on Saturday, I think it was Saturday night, at my home studio. I was, I had been out working on the, on the ranch and I, I just, it, it hit me. I was, I was reading news, I was listening to uh, uh, in Infowars and other broadcasts. I, I listened to a little bit of Rush Limbaugh. I listened to a little bit of Sean Hannity, a little bit of Dan Bongino, just to kind of get get the um, the sense of what the conversation is out there. And I, I I checked out CNN. I checked out Los Angeles Times and so on. And it hit me: the civil war is here, and leftists have dropped any pretense of now trying to be pro-America. They're no longer trying to cooperate with conservatives they're no longer trying to even pretend to defend the constitution that for them all bets are off the mask is off the inner authoritarians have come out like demons and aliens too coming out through their chest breaking through you know with blood and guts and teeth and they want to destroy america now it's a war and it hit me and that's why i recorded that that special and if i had known it was going to go so viral i would have put on a better shirt but you know i was i mean I, w I had been working on the ranch, but hey, sometimes, sometimes the things that need to be said just happen in the spur of the moment. And in, as we continue this broadcast, this hour on The Alex Jones Show, I've got a tremendous amount of information for you on the social warfare that's happening now, leftists taking off their masks and coming out, and why we can never let Democrats gain power again in our country, because they will weaponize government to destroy all of us and destroy our individual liberty. Stay with us. We'll be right back here on The Alex Jones Show after this break. If I had a piece of advice for the Trump administration today, uh, I'm sure some of their people watch the show, and I'm, I'm just a citizen, I'm just a Texan, I'm just a, a business owner and a patriot. But when I see Justice Kennedy announcing his retirement, and I know that a fight is coming for the United States Supreme Court, my biggest piece of advice today would be do not negotiate with terrorists, President Trump. Do not negotiate with the terrorists that the Democrats have become. Do not try to appease the Democrats. Do not try to come to some kind of compromise with this group of anti-American terrorists who are trying to destroy this nation and murder you. That's what they're trying to do, President Trump. They're trying to kill you. They're trying to take you out of office. They're trying to destroy this nation, and they will never... They will never compromise to appease you. They will use every weapon of government against you and against the American people. And they will never compromise on who they put on the Supreme Court. So we must not compromise at all. This fight for the, the next justice to replace Kennedy on the Supreme Court must be fought with every bit of dedication, compassion, and patriotism that our country demands if we are to, to honor the efforts that have of all the people who have gone before us to make this a constitutional republic, to, to defend this constitutional republic, to create the abundance and economic opportunities and individual liberties that we now enjoy, 
you must never compromise with domestic terrorist Democrats ever again because the mask is off. And that's not even what I came here to talk about today, but that's, that's the breaking news today. And so we must understand. In fact, let, let me just back up for a second on this. It, as part of my notes today, I did have a reminder to myself, and it says, it, it says stop trying to appease Democrats. And then sure enough, the Supreme Court you know, justice retirement announcement comes today, and it fits perfectly with that. Stop trying to appease these domestic terrorist groups because they will not stop until they accomplish the complete destruction of America. Look at this Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She won the election, displacing a longtime Democrat uh, giant in New York. Ocasio-Cortez, she, she says she's a democratic socialist. She's really, in my view, a communist. She wants to dismantle the borders completely. Now imagine, what happens to this country when you dismantle the borders? You get a wave, uh, an invading wave of foreign nationals so large and so overwhelming that this studio here in Austin, Texas would be overrun with the human wave of invaders. She wants that. She does not want America to remain a constitutional republic. She, like so many people on the radical left, they want to turn America into the slum, infested, collapsed, nearly third world status of so many Central and South American countries these days, countries that are collapsing, countries like Venezuela where there's mass starvation, even so much corruption in places like Brazil where the, the quality of life has collapsed in so many nations and they want to bring it here. And they want to overrun Texas. They want to overrun New Mexico, Arizona, California. And they claim that they own those states, that, they, that that's part of Mexico, that they have some kind of right. Look at this, this Mexican presidential candidate saying that it's a human right to flood America, to flood across the borders. And I ask you this today. Every nation, even leftists, will argue that, that Mexico has the right to enforce its borders. Even leftists will argue that Canada has the right to enforce its borders or that other nations, let's say France, for example, has the right to enforce its borders. The very definition of a nation is a political entity with a unique culture, a unique set of laws, and a border. If you don't protect your border, you don't have a nation. So protecting your border is absolutely critical to the very identity of a nation, the very existence of your nation. You protect your border. And I agree with what President Trump said the other day. He said, our border policy should be, you simply can't come in if you're an illegal invader. Now, we welcome legal immigration. And that's a very important point to remember. You know, as I've mentioned here on the show, my wife is a legal immigrant from Taiwan. We went through the process. I think it took about six years. We went through INS. We went through all the forms and the paperwork and the interviews. We did it legally. And we want legal immigrants in this country. We want to attract uh, people who can be entrepreneurs, who can create economic abundance, people who can contribute to science and real medicine, people who can create jobs for other Americans, people who can contribute to the maintenance of a free society. We want legal immigrants. We want the world's best and brightest to come to America. We don't want an unrestricted border where anybody who shows up gets in, even if you have a criminal background, even if you're trafficking little children, even if, if you're a violent criminal, even if you're you know, a drug smuggler, what, ha what have you. We cannot let those people in. And we have the right as a nation to sort out good people from bad people and to determine who comes in. The same right that you have at your front door. You have people walking up to your house and knocking on your front door and saying, hey, can we come in? Can we come in? You have the right to say, um, <laughs> no, not, not you people. Not, not you, you criminals, you, you, you felons, you child rapists. You can't come in. You have the right to say that. It's a, it's a divine right, it's a basic human right, and it's a national sovereignty right. And we have that right as a country. Now, you see, the left wants to say, they like to say, well, there's no such thing as an illegal human being. Well, actually, there is. They're rotting in prisons all throughout Central and South America and some prisons in the United States. You commit felony crimes, you rape somebody, you murder somebody, you know, you, you're a, a, a pedophile, whatever. That makes you a criminal. That makes you of illegal status. And if you 
illegally walk into the nation and you violate the national border laws, that makes you a criminal. That makes you outside the law. That makes you, by definition, illegal. So, yes, there is such a thing as an illegal human being. I mean, what is the argument of the left going to be? That there should be no prisons, that there should be no laws because uh, leftists who want to run drugs and smuggle humans and commit rape and murder should be allowed to do so without any restrictions whatsoever? I mean, haven't they actually started to do that with sanctuary cities? Think about it. A sanctuary city is a place where illegality is protected by the local bureaucrats who are working in conspiracy with lawlessness. That they, they are rejecting the very rule of law upon which modern human civilization is based. If you want a civil society, you must reject leftists right now with all of your passion and at every election because they want to overrun America. And this, again, what's her name? Ocasio, Ocasio Cortez. She, her victory in New York is in one sense, it's a warning sign that the left is going totally radical, that the left is going, you know, communist. But it's also, in a sense, a good sign because now the pretending is over. You know, the the what the 14-year congressional veteran white guy that she replaced, he was a pretender. He would pretend to be pro-America while voting against America. He would pretend to talk about how great America is and protecting the Constitution, you know, and cooperating with people. He was a pretender. This Ocasio-Cortez, she's not a pretender. She's like, abolish the border. Let everybody come in. Free housing for everyone. Government jobs guaranteed for everyone. Pure socialism. You know, even communism, just centrally planned economies. The absolute destruction of the constitutional republic that we know and enjoy today. Cortez here, she's like, the mask is off. She's like, this is who they are. Radical leftists all the way. Maxine Waters and Ocasio-Cortez, they should have a, a dynamic duo. They should have like a national tour called the Destroy America Tour, the unlimited uh, execution of conservatives and flooding the borders with illegal foreign nationals tour. That's what they should do because that's what they actually believe. Yes, it's that bad. But I, I see this as a very good sign because middle America does not want to see their country overrun and destroyed. Middle America will continue to vote against these radical left-wing extremists like uh, Ocasio-Cortez, who just won the election, or the primary, I'm sorry. Uh, middle America will vote against them. And Middle America will help save the real America that we are defending right here at Infowars.com. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You're watching The Alex Jones Show here on Infowars. This is Mike Adams filling in for the fourth hour today. Thank you for joining us. Just a reminder that Chief Justice Kennedy has announced his retirement today from the United States Supreme Court, which is sure to set off a massive battle for his replacement. And as I mentioned in the earlier segment, we are urging President Trump and all those involved in the decision to, of course, appoint and defend a constitutional originalist, as they're called, and do not back down on this fight. This is the most important decision since, since the appointment of Neil Gorsuch. And if, if Trump gets one more Supreme Court justice during his time as president, then we could lock in protection of the United States Constitution and some basic civil liberties for, for a generation to come. So it's very, very important to do this. Now, I'm going to give out the, the phone number and take at least a few calls, maybe in an upcoming segment. So if you'd like to chime in and comment about uh, Chief Justice Kennedy or other events, the war on America, then call in. It's 877-789-2539. Again, 877-789-ALEX is the number to call in. Now, as we uh, line up some calls, and you're welcome to ask me anything, including uh, about lab science if you want, because, you know, I, I am a lab scientist. I run a laboratory, mass spec. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about anything that, uh, that I have some knowledge on, so feel free to ask those questions. I want to talk about elections for just a second here, that... I've, I've really come to the conclusion over the last few days after really analyzing what's going on that we, the people, we can never again allow Democrats to run the government. And this is a big, profound realization, but it stems from the idea or the realization that we've seen now in, in after, after the Obama administration has, has left power with Trump coming in and revealing so much of the corruption and fraud We've seen how much Obama weaponized government against the people. And even John McCain, 
took part in it, and Hillary Clinton would have continued it as well. The weaponization of government now, I believe, if Democrats ever get back into office, the weaponization will go to an extreme, hyper level of new weaponization against conservatives, libertarians, Trump supporters, nonprofits. If you thought Lois Lerner and the IRS was bad under Obama, just wait until, you know, if a Democrat gets into the White House anytime in the future. They're going to turn the government into a practically, you know, like a, a, a Gestapo to come out and just hunt people down and throw them in prison. I mean, some of that has already started. I mean, look at the, look at the prosecution of Dinesh D'Souza under Obama. Look at the modern-day witch hunt against Roger Stone or Michael Flynn, for that matter. Look at what Robert Mueller has done, just even under Trump being president, although, of course, Trump doesn't control Robert Mueller, which is why this is happening. But Mueller has been able to maneuver himself to a point of weaponization against very important people in this country because of this, this deep state swamp that continues to persist in our government. We, again, to repeat, we the people can never allow Democrats to gain power in, uh, over the White House, over the Supreme Court, over Congress, House, or the Senate. We can never allow that, that again because Democrats are essentially, in my view, synonymous with domestic terrorism at this point. They are synonymous with the planned destruction of America, the suicide of a nation. That's Democrats. Uh, the GOP put out a, a really wonderful, I think, a one-minute video called Unhinged that really summarizes the mass mental illness that now afflicts Democrats who are trying to destroy this country. If you haven't seen that video, search for it. It's called Unhinged, or The Left in 2018, Unhinged. I, I believe that's the, um, that's the name of the video. They want to destroy this nation and replace it with a totalitarian, authoritarian society that they control. They don't want a constitutional republic. They don't want voters to be able to defeat them in elections. They don't want another, you know, Trump victory to ever happen again. And they will do anything. They will commit voter fraud. They will sweep in illegals and give them voting rights. Whatever it takes, they will silence your voice. They will ban you off of YouTube and Google and Facebook. They will commit massive fraud, massive crimes. They will try to carry out mass executions if they think they can get away with it. That's how bad they have become. We must never again allow Democrats to come into power in this nation. And, you know, along those lines, I, this is my view. I don't know if Alex agrees with this. Probably, probably he does. But I believe that every election where a Democrat wins the election is null and void until we have a national voter ID law. Because you've got so many non-citizens now voting in elections in places like California that, let's face it, encourage illegals to come in and vote. And they're voting in not only local elections, but they're voting for Senate members from California, members of the House, that then represent California in Washington to make legislation that affects all of us across the country. So you've got an anti-American state, a rogue state, California, not all the people in California are bad, but I'm talking about the left coast portion of bureaucrats and the Jerry Browns who are anti-American. They want to commit national suicide. They despise America. They despise Trump. They despise democracy. They are sweeping in wave after wave of foreign nationals, i.e. illegals, not, not even undocumented immigrants. They're not immigrants. Immigration is a legal process that they're bypassing. They're not immigrants. They're an invading foreign national force that is then sweeping into ballot boxes and voting booths and then overthrowing the rights of American citizens, overthrowing our votes with their votes, even though they've never paid a dime of taxes in this country. They've ne they didn't grow up as Americans. They've never been part of this country, and they're not willing to go through the legal process of immigration like my wife did from Taiwan. Taiwan, by the way, is the, is, I call it the Texas of Asia. Taiwan is the, the free country that we want to support. Don't let China take over Taiwan. But just, just mark my words here. Do not let Democrats gain power again in this country. They will use it to weaponize government against us all. Now, let's go to a, a call. We've got Nemo from Massachusetts. Nemo, you're on the air with Mike Adams. Uh, go ahead with your question or comment. You're live. Hi, Mike. How are you, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. What's on your mind today? Uh, actually, that fentanyl incident is uh, somewhat on my mind. 
Um, that, that was just bizarre stuff. Uh, I live in Massachusetts, which um, doesn't get much media coverage, but we are absolutely ground zero for fentanyl. Um, I have the uh, fortune, misfortune of having worked in the uh, – <laughs> what you might call the homeless industrial complex. Uh, since gotten out, uh, I've connected the people who are still working there. And um, I don't know if it's changed, maybe it has, but uh, the perception that fentanyl actually comes from China is 50% uh, true at best. No, uh, chemical... just, just to be clear, just for the listeners, you're talking about fentanyl, uh, which is uh, used to augment a lot of other drugs. And, and you're right, not all of it comes from China, but what, what are you seeing on the streets with it? Oh, God, it's um, it's been wiping out people by the thousands uh, in Massachusetts for the last several years. Um, uh, addicts have switched, like, maybe maybe generously 20% of the heroin people are using on the street in Massachusetts is heroin. Most of uh, that wow. under 80% of fentanyl. Um, and they'll cut it with anything. They've cut it with herbicide before, even in Cambridge, which you might think is uh, more, more upper crust. Uh, not so. If you were to walk through Harvard Square, it is a absolute den of iniquity there's crap on the streets and there are there are people walking around completely stoned shouting at people well, asking Nemo, that, it's a very prescient warning i'm sorry to cut you off there we're going to break here in just a few seconds but uh, you're right fentanyl is almost a form of national suicide its abuse is and we'll take more calls on the other side of this break you're watching the alex jones show stay with us you might think that uh, being a fill-in host here for alex jones that Covering all this negative news m might make you feel depressed or frustrated, but I, I got to tell you, every time that I fill in and host here, it's, it's the best part of my day, and I leave here energized every time. You know why? Because I have the honor of helping to fight for the future of our free nation, of our constitutional republic, and there is no greater honor, there's no greater contribution that I can make to the future of our world, in my view, than to fighting, fighting for liberty and freedom of the individual. And this is the place from which that war is being fought by dedicated patriots and individuals who, who know their history, who are intelligent, who are, frankly, compassionate, even though we may often sound you know, frustrated at the attacks on liberty, but we're compassionate about humans and human beings and divine rights and divine liberty. And this is a great honor to be here. So I want to thank you for watching or listening. And it's a great honor to be here every time that I'm here. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to mention something here. You know, uh, Alex has all his notes here on the desk. And also, uh, this is one of the product plugs. that I'm just going to read this and make a comment. The Super Blue fluoride-free products, he's got it 50% off now throughout the entire InfoWars store. All the, the, the Super Blue products... And that's the, the mouthwash, the toothpaste, the oral spray, and all those things. But, you know, we publish uh, hundreds of websites, and one of them is, I think, medicine.news. I remember seeing a study recently that talked about the relationship between oral health and the, you know, frankly, the, the, the prevention of, of heart disease. And I can come on and say that even though Alex couldn't because, you know, I, this is not uh, my company or my organization. But medically, if you go look at the research, you'll find that people who have really toxic uh, bacteria in their mouths, that has been scientifically and medically linked to, of course, an increased risk of heart disease. And now I'm not claiming that any of these products would mitigate that risk. They're not designed to treat or cure any disease. I'm certainly not making that kind of claim. Just saying that you should look at the research because good oral health is good body health throughout your whole body. And I, I review you know, dozens of medical and science headlines every day. Actually, it's a couple hundred. And I see this research out there, so it's, it's, it's worth mentioning, even though I'm not making any disease treatment claims, and I don't have any financial ties to, to these products. So just passing along some good medical knowledge for you there. Getting to a bigger picture item here now, and, and we're going to go to some calls in a bit, but I've got something else to say first. I've been thinking about how this civil war is, is shaping up in America, and I've come to the conclusion that it's going to be a three-front war. So I want to share this with you to get you thinking about how this works and what this might look like. Because depending on where you are in America, you're going to be called upon to, I think, fight on a different front to defend America in the coming civil war. And by the way, according to a Rasmussen poll, now 31% of likely U.S. voters believe that there will be a second civil war in the next five years. That's a shocking poll, you know, from the point of view of many people. 
who, who haven't been paying attention to this, but to you and I and Alex and others, we know this is coming. So that, that's not shocking to us at all. But I see this happening on three fronts. I think first, when the Civil War breaks out, you're going to have the initiation of kinetic warfare, the, the, the attempted door-to-door -door mass executions carried out by radical left-wing Antifa members and other domestic terrorists, also known as Democrats, you know, radical leftists. They're going to go door-to-door. -door. They're going to try to execute all of their political enemies because they haven't been able to shut us all down through censorship. So they're going to try to do it with you know, machetes and firearms, whatever it takes. Uh, remember, one of their groups is called, I think, By Any Means Necessary. That's the name of their group. And that's what they believe, by any means necessary. They want to kill you. I think that we're going to have uh, California, the left coast of California, will be one of the hubs of the radical left-wing Antifa terrorist uh, attempts to start branching out and sweeping through different cities to try to take down Trump supporters and take down conservatives. I see in response to that, rural Californians and rural Oregonians, for example, and people in rural Washington, eastern Washington or eastern California, northern California, resisting that and actually having some organized pro-patriot, pro-America groups resisting the terrorism and the violence of Antifa and actually having kinetic engagements in California. You know, the fight for Sacramento, for example, might be one of the battlegrounds for California. And Sacramento is you know not in not not that close to san francisco you know there, there could be quite a war for sacramento uh, there could be wars for portland wars for seattle there's going to be a lot of kinetic warfare out there on the west coast the southern border is going to be flooded with a an activated wave of illegal invading foreign nationals who are of military age the left-wing media will call them unaccompanied minors but they will be men who are 19 20 21 years old like those that the New York Times recently called, you know, children who were separated from their mothers. No, uh, these are adult military age men coming into the United States for a purpose, and they will sweep across the border. So those of you who are in Southern California, Arizona, New Mexico, and especially Texas, you will be tasked with stopping this invasion, this military invasion and occupation attempt along the Southern border. At the same time this is happening, I can see the United Nations now bringing in occupying troops all along the east coast because that's closer to you know it's easier flights from europe where a lot of these troops will come from and it's also close to the power centers of washington dc virginia wall street new york city and so on east coast patriots will be tasked with eliminating the invading enemy occupying force of united nations troops so that's a three-front war for america west coast you got the domestic terrorists antifa radical anti-American leftists. Southern border, you've got patriots who are trying to stop the human wave of invading military-aged men who are trying to overthrow this country. East Coast, you got to push back United Nations troops who are invading enemy occupying forces organized by the, you know, illegal forces in Europe who want to destroy sovereignty in terms of nations. Now, fortunately, those of you who are up near Canada we're not going to be at war with Canadians, thank goodness, because we don't, we don't need that. Canadians are probably going to support a lot of our efforts, too. Canadians don't want America to fall to globalists, not the informed Canadians. They don't want America to be overrun with, you know, uh, dangerous criminals from Central and South America who are military-aged young men who just want to overthrow and loot entire countries and turn America into basically a slum, which is often, in many cases, the kind of country they've come from countries that have been transformed into slums. And Canada doesn't want Canada to be next on the list. Then Canada would have to defend its border, and we know that Canadian politicians are spineless cowards who will never defend their own borders <laughs> as well. So Canada wants America to survive this as well. But think about this. Now, I mean, these are, these are projections. These are not, I'm not saying 100% that this is how it's gonna happen. These are projections, and hopefully none of this happens. But with now 31% of the country seeing a civil war taking place in the next five years, and now left-wing, radical left-wing groups demanding that we dismantle our border protection, demanding the complete disarmament of American citizens, the absolute nationwide gun confiscation from the American people, you think about what they want for America, and it leads to civil war. It is almost inevitable. Now, how it shapes up or, or, or how it 
how it actually rolls out, you know, state by state is anyone's guess. We, we can't see the future, but we know. And I, I tell you this, I share this with you today. If you love America and you support this constitutional republic, you will be asked to make some contribution or a sacrifice to defend this nation, whether it's supplying logistics, your prepper gear might need to go to the young men who pick up rifles to defend their nation. You might need to provide water filters, emergency medicine, uh, communications gear, ammunition, maybe even your spare rifle for that matter. If we are under assault and we're invaded and attacked as a nation, we have every right to defend ourselves. And you as an American citizen will be called upon to contribute to that defense. Be ready mentally, be ready in your spirit, in your soul, and be ready with whatever preparedness gear that you need to help defend this nation because America is worth defending. We'll be right back here on The Alex Jones Show. You know, people are asking me about the, the upcoming launch of Reel.Video. That's the YouTube alternative. I've been spearheading that, spearheading that project, and uh, I'll give you just, just a quick update. It is launching. We may have some videos live on July 4th, I hope, but it's going to be very basic. <laughs> I mean... Uh, we may not even have comments working on that, that day. We're just trying to get it up and running as quickly as possible. And then over the subsequent weeks, more and more features will be rolled out. Eventually, we have an RSS feed. Uh, that site doesn't track users. So there's no such thing as a, um, you know, like a user login or, or you know, anything like that. Because we don't want to track anybody. We don't want to be like Google. But Reel.Video is launching. Uh, InfoWars videos are going to be broadcast there. And we've got tens of thousands of people requesting channels. So just, just have some patience with it because it's going to be very, very basic on, on the first day it's live and it'll, it'll get better over time. You know, it takes R&D. R&D is hard. Good R&D is very hard. Let's take some calls now in this segment. Steve from Florida, you're, you're next. Uh, thank you for calling. You're on with Mike Adams. What's on your mind? Hey, Mike, I just want to say thank you so much for launching Real Video because uh, I'm really excited about it. Uh, I'm, I am on YouTube. I have been on YouTube for a couple of years. And think about it now channel and i've got a couple websites think about it dot online and think about it new dot news and i'm really excited because i tried a couple other platforms because what i'm doing is i'm trying to make the break i'm trying to i'm trying to get off before they shut me off like they did you yeah but uh i just i just want to say you know thank you so much you're you're, you're basically doing the same thing that alex is doing only you're filling the other gaps you're filling the gaps that alex can't do doesn't have time to do and, and, it's, and it's huge in this battle because what we're going to be running into, if we still have Internet, will be a, a complete shutdown. They'll just, they'll just take us off because they don't want to hear what we have to say, and they know that we're going to tell people the truth. And I look at all of our channels and all of our, all of our you know, uh, uh, activities as an awakening. It's an, it's an awakening trying to awaken the general public to what's really going on. Yeah, well, well said, Steve. Um, I appreciate your comments, and I, I hope you create a channel there. And I look forward to featuring your videos there as well. And one thing I should mention, uh, I haven't even mentioned this publicly, but we have, an, uh, we have a massive edit editorial team, <clears throat> excuse me, and we're going to be writing articles, you know, for you about your videos, people who have interesting videos, breaking news. We're going to be just automatically writing stories and posting stories about your best videos. It's just a free service. It's a thing that we want to do to publicize your videos. So, you know, Steve, if you've got uh, some, some breaking news, you know, upload it. Our team will see it. And we'll send it over to our writing team, and we'll be posting it. We've got, you know, hundreds of websites, so we're going to be getting news out all over the place. I don't remember YouTube ever helping to promote your video with an article, you know, but we're, we're doing it. So thank you for your call, Steve. I appreciate it. Let's take some more calls. Uh, Liberty in Oklahoma, I believe, is calling. Uh, Liberty, you're live on the air. Go ahead. Well, what do you say there, Mr. Mike? <laughs> hey, it's great to have you on. Hey, second week in a row I've got to talk to you. Uh, Liberty Smith. It's, it's unreal. I, I I can't even believe I'm hosting second week in a row. I mean, you never know. It's just, it's know, just a random. <laughs> I know. I'm loving it. Yeah, well, uh, what, what's on your mind today? Well, I, I'll tell you, you know, you're doing a great job, man. I, and I did repost your video from the other night. Well, thank you. I repost everything. And I try to be balanced. Uh, you know, there's so many different conservative sites out there, and they're good. But you can't get to them all, so I try to, you know, obviously I, I do info wars. I'm an info warrior from 1997. Wow. So I've yeah. been around for a little while and listening to Alex and, and all the new new uh, characters out there, including you, and it's just awesome. 
Well, I tell you, I, I appreciate your comments. And, you know, look, we are just trying to save our, our republic. That's it. There's nothing more. I, I think Alex would, would agree with me that it'd be so much easier just live a peaceful life and not, not even in the public space, not even be a famous person, not even be recognizable in the streets. It'd be so much easier. But history calls for us to be here. So that's what we do, what we're doing. So I, I appreciate your support. Did you have one, uh, another comment or question? Yes, you know, when I was a kid, you know, I mean, I'm talking the early 70s, like 1969, 1970, growing up, I always was a constitutionalist-minded kid, you know, why ain't they doing this? And it says this in the Constitution and that in the Constitution, and, and everybody called me, oh, Bob, because that's my real name. I took on Liberty because I'm a Liberty Smith. You get it? I get it. I like it. They, they, <laughs> you you create they say, Liberty. Bob, they say, Bob, you, you know, you're just radical. What is wrong with you? And now, 50 years later, I'm like, what was wrong with me? Now I see what was wrong with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's fascinating and, that you had that perspective as a child. That's very, very unusual. And I appreciate you calling in. Uh, try to call in again next time that I'm hosting as well. But I'm going to go to some other callers. So I appreciate your call, Liberty. Best to you. Keep up the great work. Let's go to another caller, Alex in Michigan. And uh, Alex, go ahead. You're you're live on the air with Mike Adams. Hello. Yes, you're you're live. Go ahead. Hello. Hi there, Alex. Hey, what's going on, Mike? Uh, quick plug: uh, the water filter is great at InfoWarsStore.com. I use it to make tea and coffee every day. The Survival Shoot X2 and the Real Red Pill and the Turmeric, uh, great products. I wanted to talk about Disease X, and uh, if you look at Bayer Pharmaceuticals. Um, their involvement in like China and they also invented heroin if info warriors didn't know that and uh solutions to the problem I wanted to ask you about what do you think about detox stuff like uh, chlorella and spirulina uh, cyanobacteria and uh, zeolites and also a garicon mushroom that Paul Stamatz has done some great research on and uh yeah, what do you think about that? Well, I, that's a great question. I've done a tremendous amount of research on environmental exposure to toxins, and the simplest answer on what we call detox, the simplest thing that's basically free, is to just consume clean water and breathe clean air, get away from the contamination exposure, and your body will do a lot of natural detox on its own. So clean food, you know, organic food, don't eat the pesticides, don't eat the herbicides, clean water, and so on, you'll detox a lot. Now, you can accelerate the detox with other kinds of nutritional supplements. But I got to say, you know, for most people, if you're, if you're on a budget and you just want to detox, the, the key is to avoid consistent exposure. So you may have lead pipes going to your house, copper pipes. Maybe you get too much copper, you know, too much lead. Maybe you're breathing toxic air because you live next to the highway. Maybe you, you, you've got uh, toxins in your personal care products. It's about shifting over to clean products, everything in your home, from your toothpaste, you know, to your laundry detergent, everything. Uh, stop putting cologne on your skin unless it's truly natural, essential oils, those kinds of things. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely, Mike. Yeah, that's, that's, um, my, that's my take on it. Any other question? Nope. I just wanted to also say the DARPA labs can't compete with the InfoWarrior citizen scientists just tinkering in their garage and stuff. <laughs> that's, that's great, you know. Uh, real science is logic and reason, and it turns out that pro-America patriots are very strong in the areas of logic and reason. Uh, we understand cause and effect. That's what makes us good scientists. So thank you for your call there, Alex. Let's take, uh, who is it, uh, Nelson in Georgia, if I'm reading that cor correctly. Nelson, is it, did I have your name right? That's correct. Oh. I'm Nelson Williams, the singing scientist here in Georgia, and I run the Help Make America Great Again project on Facebook. Fantastic. I run the Help Make America Great Again project on Facebook. Can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you just fine. Yep, that sounds exciting. Tell us about it. Yeah, well, the goal, the goal of the project is to build state-of-the-art indoor vertical farms on a mass scale to stop the corporations from poisoning every city, and the only way we're going to get our communities back is if we get our health back. And so I like your, I love your work, and I want to partner up with you, and I wanted to get my message to you. And I send all my people to have their water tested through you because I trust your laboratory. And water is the most important thing on the planet, so we need to take care of that. And, uh, again, my projects to help make America great again project on Facebook. If you have time, I know you're busy, but check it out. 
That's and, awesome. Uh, well, Nelson, uh, stay on the line after this call and the show is about to wrap up, but stay on the line and I'll ask the producers to get your email. We'll be in, we'll be in touch with you. But let me ask you another question too. I mean, you, you've you nailed it. You're absolutely correct that, that protecting ourselves from toxic poisons and heavy metals and other organic molecules that are toxic, this is key to really saving our nation because it allows us to function with, you know, reason and logic and and to have the energy to fight back against globalism are you is your message resonating with a lot of people absolutely i'm, I'm getting i you know i have 85 businesses in my community passing out my cards to create the awareness and then every time i'm on the show everyone joins my uh, website on facebook and it's the only way we're going to get because we have to start with our health because we can't fight any other way we have to have our brains working you know, every, our health connects us, you know, on a spiritual level, the energy level, you know, so that's why, my, you know, I'm a scientist. I've studied all the problems, and we need to start with our health. So, and with these vertical farms, we can take one acre of land and get a 500-acre yield out of it by putting a five-story building on the You property. are absolutely right, Nelson. Sorry to, to cut you off there. We're about to wrap up the show, but you've absolutely nailed it. You are 100% correct. If we're going to win this war for America, we have to protect our health. You can't fight for freedom on a chemotherapy drip, people. So, so practice some anti-cancer lifestyles, live healthy, and fight for freedom. Thanks for watching today. You know, someone very profoundly once said many years ago that if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of, li of liberalism. He goes to jail. He goes to jail. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. InfoWars comes to mind. Alex Jones. Alex Jones. Alex Jones. Well, there's a lot of controversy around this network about Alex Jones. Google is being accused of hiding negative stories about Hillary and her campaign by changing its algorithm to bury stories like the Clinton body count story. That's according to website InfoWars. It sounds like it's confirmed there are at least two shooters with fully automatic weapons. Dr. Martin Luther King has been shot to death in Memphis, Tennessee. JFK was shot from the back and the front. It was almost as if there were a planned implosion. It just pancaked. They took the babies out of incubators and left the children to die on the I think this is a national security imperative. We have clear things that we do not understand how they work operating in areas that we can't control. UFOs. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world? The central bank is in charge. Israel claims the attack was accidental, but some former U.S. naval officers say it was on purpose. They describe the day's action as part of a continuing cover-up. Russian intelligence compiled a dossier on Mr. Trump during visits to Moscow. Russian scum! He denied everything. He called it all fake news. And he accused CNN of being fake news. This is a national emergency. If they kill Trump or remove Trump, it will cause a massive civil war in this country. This is a FEMA high level of it. We are at war with Russia. Are you aware that Mr. Stone also stated publicly that he was in direct communication with Julian Assange and WikiLeaks? The White House and the president are citing InfoWars. They can shut us down. You're next. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. It's Alex Jones. A few years ago, ideas that we talked about were thought to be fringe ideas, radical ideas, extremist ideas. Those ideas are now mainstream. I, I, I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. Do something about your dad's immigration practices, you feckless c What's Uncle Tom but for white women who disappoint other white women? One way you get rid of Trump is a crashing economy, so please bring on the recession. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. It has been said that the Republican Party's testicles just dropped. That wasn't an Infowars.com ad you just saw. That was officially put out by the Republican Party. 
Ladies and gentlemen, they're finally getting the fact that the globalists are trying to start a violent revolution in this country and overthrow it and bring it down just like Venezuela and so many others that have fallen to socialism and communism. And now Alexandra Cortez, 28-year-old communist, that's her platform, she calls herself a democratic socialist, is another bellwether winning a primary against the Democrat establishment candidate in New York. Ladies and gentlemen, there are few countries that have not fallen to socialism and communism. And that's because the big mega banks that are offshore finance it to bring down countries and control populations and annihilate middle classes. Much of Central and South America are in open martial law right now with millions of people every year starving to death or being killed. Hundreds of millions are trying to migrate up to North America, threatening to collapse El Norte as well. Meanwhile, in Africa, in the Middle East, the UN and the globalists came in in front of the Arab Spring to bring down moderate pro-Western governments, engage in mass murder, and then turn the countries over to jihadis, further collapsing the area, then opening the borders of Europe up for full invasion. The UN has now openly announced that they are planning to take control of the EU during this emergency and bring in 200 million people that they will control. This is 21st century warfare. This is happening. But the good news is, all over the world, people are waking up to the globalist plan. Thanks to the viewers and listeners of InfoWars who have been recognized by the president, by the Pentagon, and by patriots and our intelligence agencies as being the original emergency beacon that started the chain reaction globally, allowing us to see this worldwide movement of populism, nationalism against collectivism and the big mega banks. But we've got to go further now. We've got to identify the big tech giants and the Fortune 100, the IBMs, the Microsofts, the Goldman Sachs, and others that are worth tens of trillions of dollars and are above the law who are orchestrating this diabolical plan after oppressing the third world, now collapsing it and using it as a weapon against us. The globalists recognize that InfoWars has been on the very front lines of this global awakening. And they don't want us to be there as this fight intensifies to continue to rally free humans all over the planet against this diabolical globalist program. That's why it's more critical than ever that you understand that we are not supported by George Soros or any big banks or any big corporations. We are supported by you, the viewers, and the listeners that buy the products at InfoWarsStore.com. We need to be reprovisioned in this fight. We need to be able to fund our operation. And we make it easy with products like Super Blue, fluoride-free toothpaste, mouthwash, immune gargle, and so much more, fortified with colloidal silver, fortified with the highest quality iodine, fortified with natural essential oils and more. You help your teeth, you help your body, you help your gums, you help your country, you help your planet through free market, free association. The products are 50% off right now going through our super sale that we're gonna have on July 4th. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com. This is where you finance the second American Revolution with the United States now attempting to stop the global government empire, attempting to take back control of our destiny on a global scale.